Uh, we live? And then I realized I still had myself muted. Uh, so I thought I'd, thought I'd show you what I've been working on today before we jump back into uh, the actual save for space exploration. Uh, this is the next iteration of the Omni Smelter design. Doing away with the sushi belt. And we're not really trying to have enough throughput to keep up with whatever individual resource we're smelting, although that's odd. Um, there should be enough iron plate throughput on the belt for steel. No, there isn't. I'm not sure how it's reaching this one, but not this one. Oh, the filter inserter is going for the stone and the iron plate actually stops here. That's why. So there isn't actually anything unique about uh, this furnace that's making it not work. Um, but anyway, uh, the we're not aiming with this design to be able to have enough continuous throughput to smelt any one thing constantly. However, what we are doing is sharing a chest. Uh, each chest holds two resources. We have a pretty simple circuit for each one. Uh, a single filter inserter set to set filters blacklist. A constant combinator that has a negative number for how many extra items the filter inserter is allowed to pick up. And uh, we're setting each of these to half a chest. And in the case of Vulcanite blocks, uh, we're stopping at one stack of Vulcanite blocks and just about half filling the chest with sand. Because this is going to be the chest where uh, overflow items get dumped into from the crafting combinator mod. So any finished products are going to end up in here, and we want to... I almost was going to say, actually, now that I look at it, we could have fit those over here, but no, not, not with a beacon in the middle. So, um, finished products, even if it is iron plate that would have become steel, uh, gets dumped into the output belt. And the idea is we're going to use the latch system again for deciding which resource to smelt. So we're going to stick to whatever recipe we're doing for quite a while. Um, either until the output is full or the input runs out. And once we switch recipe, uh, by that time we're going to have... Well, this one's done copper first for whatever reason. Um, but as you can see from the filter, we've stopped picking up copper. Um, if we reorganize this just a little bit, it should be a bit more clear that we've got exactly... We've actually gone over. How much copper is this? Uh, 500... 1,000... 1.2k plus 1. That's interesting. I wonder how that happened. Because we've set this to... Oh, I think... Uh... 
Hmm. Supposedly we've set it so that we're allowed to have 1,197 extra items in here. Um, but with a stack size of 3, the idea is that wouldn't go over 1,200. But I think maybe this is actually supposed to be 1,196. Um, so to make it a little bit more clear, uh, what we're doing here is... Let's set the stack size to 1 for a moment. Copper ore. Uh, blacklist, set filters. And once we've got one copper ore in there, the insert will stop. However, if we set this to negative 11, we're going to pick up 11 more items. And my thought was, if we set this to... Oops. Uh, if we allow a stack size of 3 and we set this to negative 97, that should never go over 100. But if it's 97 extra items, it means it could actually have 98 items, and it could go over. Let's see. Um, I just have to get it to... No? No. So this is actually correct. Yeah, if this drops down to 47, let's put a stack size 1 inserter over here. Yoink. Stops at exactly 100. I actually have no idea how we ended up with a one extra copper over here. Hey, Cassandra Asmolith. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. In any case, it shouldn't cause any problems. At worst, we'll have, like, one less stack of iron in a chest that's half full of it. A Velda. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How do you get on this map of testing? Uh, it is a mod called... Let's see. Uh, Editor Extensions. Install that. And if you go to the scenarios, like a new game, um, it has this map as one of those scenarios. So you can jump right in. Um, it'll include some stuff like this. Uh, also a super robo port with a bunch of bots in it. Um, so basically you've got a infinity storage chest, uh, Aggregate, passive provider chest, super bots, super robot port, etc. Anything you place down is as a blueprint is just going to get built almost instantly. Gotcha, no worries. So, anyway, the point is now that we've got like half a chest full of copper and iron in most of these chests, except for this one that decided to be weird. Um, once we switch over to Iron Plate, for example... Why is that one still on steel? Oh, is it doing the thing? No. What? Not enough space in storage chest? Is this... Behind right, it's set wrong. All of these ones should be behind left. Um, I don't know why they're still doing that. The last time we had this weird bug, I think, I think this is how we fixed it. Literally just rotate them. It looks like it's only the right side ones that are doing it as well. Uh, why don't we copy these settings? Um, it's the ones on the right of the output, to be clear. There we go. 
Except, wait, that doesn't actually copy-paste the inserter settings properly. I mean, the overflow chest position. Uh, behind left. Oh, all of the resources spilled out onto the floor. Fantastic. But anyway, the point is, instead of trying to get enough belt throughput to constantly sp uh, supply, for example, uh, 108 iron ore per second, and also 108 copper ore per second, etc. Um, and instead of using a sushi belt, we're just going to have the inputs coming in of half a blue belt for each resource, all the time, no matter what we're smelting. And while we're smelting iron, we are stocking up on stone and iron plate and copper, for example. So with this, um, we shouldn't have too much trouble. I just want to check now, if we switch over to copper plate, we should get... Uh, we should end up with some iron ore in this chest. I thought we would anyway. Where did it go? Uh, it disappeared a lot quicker than I expected. Well, what I was trying to prove is... Um, this is just a basic filter inserter. We're only going to smelt five things with these smelters. It definitely simplifies things a bit. Uh, on a filter inserter, we can literally just fit all of these... Oh, that's whitelist. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. So we're whitelisting the output products to go to this uh, red underground here. And we're keeping anything that is supposed to go into the uh, furnace in this chest. Which is why we're going to leave it a bit more empty than the other ones. If you use the vulcanite recipe, wouldn't the limiting factor be the output belt? Uh, yes, the output belt here is actually not quite enough for copper plate or iron plate. Uh, let's check with... No, not that one. Um, what am I doing? Copper plate with vulcanite blocks. So we'll swap that over. And can we please stop with this text? Okay. Um, so our rate over here is 80 per second. Um... That is considerably more than I was expecting, since we definitely can't fit four rows of this, um, and we've got plenty of space with three rows. I might just uh, stretch this out three more tiles so that we've got two blue belts of output uh, coming down each of these. Uh, because, yeah, that was uh, far more than I expected. So the next challenge is going to be, I've already like figured out all of the logic and stuff before, that's going to be somewhat a copy paste job, also looking for little ways that I can improve it. This should be behind left. Can we please stop with the text now? Fantastic. Um, yeah, the challenge at this point is going to be... If I stretch it out so that we can have the 80 copper plate per second coming out, um, we're going to need four blue belts going to iron and copper. Uh, maybe stone brick, I don't know, let's find out. Um, stone brick 
we're looking at less than a blue belt, even with the Vulcanite block recipe. That one's not going to be a problem. Although it is still going to be like approaching three blue belts. Uh, 50 per second without the Vulcanite block. That actually, wait. So stone brick without the Vulcanite block recipe. Oh, I think it just changed. Wait, what? No? Okay. Maybe I just typed this by accident or something. Um, 50 stone brick per second with Vulcanite. It goes up to... It goes down to 40 per second. Okay. So Vulcanite is slower. Uh, iron plate... 50 per second. Iron plate with Vulcanite. Eighty per second. That's weird. So the stone brick one slows down if you use Vulcanite, but the iron plate or copper plate one doubles. Uh, well, not doubles. It it, it goes a lot faster. Eighty per second. Fifty per second. That is weird. In any case, um, we're looking at a maximum of 150 uh, stone brick per second, which is more than three blue belts. Bloody hell. At this rate, only steel is only going to need a belt or two. Um, maybe I'll like shorten this or something. I, I, I did a column of nine because I wanted to get the most out of the beacons, but that's not that important. If we do steel, no, let's do glass first. Glass is, well, apparently we're missing a resource for glass, or maybe I, what? What? Why are we not? able to make glass. We can do glass with the vulcanite blocks. That's less than a blue belt uh, between these two. So that'll be 120, which is less than three blue belts. Uh, if we don't want to bottleneck the whole system, we will have to do multiple blue belts. Uh, I haven't really left room... I moved this up higher um, than the input that we had for the old Omni smelter um, because I was really trying to fit 12 uh, columns of 12 in, but we're going to have to have three blue belts coming up to glass, which if we're going to do it here, that is just not going to fit. Hmm. Why do we keep getting hitches like this, though? A Royal PS2K. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. How much is the Vulcanite stone brick recipe? Uh, it is... Uh, eight stone, one Vulcanite spits out six stone brick, whereas the iron and copper one spit out 12. And I think they all take 24 seconds. So that would be why. So I'm curious as to why we weren't getting glass set as a recipe here. That seems very strange. Hang on. What? I'm pretty sure it worked before, but maybe I just never noticed 
and I was testing with Vulcanite. Uh, right recipe. Glass. I don't understand. Glass. Recipe glass. Do I have to... Wait, do I have to pick this one? What? Why is that? Well, um... Yeah, you want to watch out for this one. Don't pick recipe delivery cannon glass capsule... Uh, delivery cannon capsule glass. That's not going to work. Okay, for some reason we just have to pick recipe glass here. That's... That'll work at least. Um... Even though there's no equivalent for iron, for example. Okay. Maybe it's because it's modded. Uh, 40 glass per second. Wasn't that what we got with the vulcanite blocks? I thought it was exactly this. Uh, 40.32. Uh, glass with vulcanite. And then... 40.32. That's interesting. So glass is six glass. Wait, what? Glass. Four sand. One glass. Six glass. Sixteen sand, one vulcanite block. Um, I'm guessing that recipe glass signal... Um, is actually with vulcanite blocks and it just doesn't say no recipe glass glass okay um one per second and with the vulcanite blocks one per second it's exactly the same. That's kind of weird. Okay, what about steel, though? Uh, well, I don't think we have to worry about steel, but can we fit it all in one belt? Probably not. We can. That is a very small mercy after figuring out that we need four blue belts. Um, for iron, copper, three blue... I think three blue belts. Yeah, definitely three blue belts for glass. And uh, stone brick. I think the regular stone brick was faster, wasn't it? Why did that start doing that again? 50 times 3 per second, that's kind of fast. That's the same as regular copper, I believe. Yep. Um, I think that was faster than with the Vulcanite blocks. Yeah, so 150, uh, that is easily requiring uh, four blue belts. I don't know how I'm going to fit all the outputs. In fact, I literally can't. Not the way things are. Maybe we'll just end up using a bit less space. Why is it doing this? Oh, the chest is actually full. Okay. I probably should set this to... Well, to be fair, I just swapped recipes around a bunch when that would normally not happen with our finished product. Uh, but that said, maybe I should reduce the amount of sand that we're storing in this ch Whoa, okay, it's all vulcanite blocks. Yeah, it's because I kept swapping the recipes so often. 
Uh, anyway, regardless, there's going to be some fun uh, balancing and throughput issues to try and figure out there. Considering this whole thing still produces less than a blue belt of steel, I don't really want to reduce the number of furnaces here. But it might be some fun belt spaghetti trying to... Uh, trying to rate everything. Trying to fit everything together here. If we approach this from both sides... Um, like that. That would allow us to get two blue belts. Uh, four blue belts here pretty easily. Okay, it might be doable. Let's jump back into our regular game, shall we? Hey, I am Sir. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. With Vulcanite you consume it less? Yes, absolutely. What's your reasoning behind using an Omni Smelter and not dedicated smelters? You can just keep copy-pasting them, and you don't have to estimate how many smelters you need for different resources. Um, you'll get a lot less idle time for the smelters. You can just keep adding them until, you know, occasionally they stop. Um, I would point out in a mod like Space Exploration, there are so many things to smelt that at least at this point with my experiments uh, and designs I think I would recommend not trying to smelt any more than say five things at a time. Uh, this one can do six and it required a whole lot more combinators. Uh, we're using a sushi belt here and sharing all of the inputs in the one chest, um, which certainly compared to what we were working with just now, kind of simplified the inputs a little bit in a way. But we actually need two uh, long combinators per uh, per chest. Um, we also need a counting system for the sushi belt to make sure it doesn't get too full. And we've got another system here that says whatever we're not smelting you're allowed to pick up more of so that it clears out the belt from last time. Uh, I'm getting a little bit carried away explaining that and I think I'm drifting away from the original question. Hey I am Suck, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. Welcome, welcome. Um, it's very humbling and motivating when you all want to put something in the tip jar. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks for all the free entertainment. You're welcome. I think I'd do four belts myself. Yeah, I had been thinking about... I, I, I do strongly prefer to have, like, four belts of output. It's much easier to, you know... It, power of two numbers, or at least multiple of two is much easier um, when it comes to merging cleanly and everything. Deserve this? Thank you. Um, but yeah, the one of the things that I wanted to address redesigning this uh, Omni Smelter is basically the bottleneck of uh, the belt inputs. Um, Unfortunately, the design that I'm trying to make right now is just a little bit too big for these lovely rail, blo uh, rail blocks that we've come up with. Um, but yeah, reasons for Omni Smelting, you can just keep making more of them and you don't have to guess and check how many smelters you need for each resource and have a bunch of them sitting idle all the time. And if you're going to beacon them in vanilla, that makes uh, even more sense, because beacons chew up an obscene amount of power just sitting idle. 
Whereas with these lovely space exploration beacons, uh, they actually only consume, you can't see it, but I think it's 200 kilowatts uh, by themselves. Anyway, um, I did go ahead and drop a radar over here. So that's off the to-do list. We do have plenty of power now, it seems like. Uh, did we just hit nighttime? We did. And our accumulators do not care. Although we did just turn... The delivery cannon powers spikes are a lot bigger than I might have expected. Core mining drills are not switching on and off. It might be the case that we could fit some more. Um... Oh, I just realized as well, because these are not balanced, uh, they're probably all bottlenecking on... Why doesn't... Oh, I see. They're probably all bottlenecking on what the slower side is producing. Because we have a balanced loader and we don't merge everything first. Um, but yeah, something else I wanted to look into. Oh, I almost forgot. I added a, uh, I noticed a train was picking up iron from iron storage and taking it to get destroyed, um, at our resource sink. So, so all I had to do to fix that was put encoded network ID number one on these drop-off stations over here. And what that accomplishes is our drop-offs for our storage system are encoded network ID number one, and the pickups are encoded network ID number two. So they're on separate uh, virtual rail networks. The default, if you don't include one of these, is a train is allowed to a train station can interact with every other network. So basically we've just made it so that uh, this drop-off station and this pickup station won't, you won't get a schedule, you won't get a delivery from here to here. And the same thing applies for this to this. A shack cut. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Um, the thing that I have put almost no thought into, except that uh, it is something that I want to do, is can and should we stop core mining if we have a bunch of resources here that we're waiting to destroy? Um, the thing is, we have, we're not accumulating any coal at the moment. Um, I don't know if... I, I don't know if... Well, we've been consuming a lot of sulfur. Uh, this one still has... Okay, yeah, there's like no sulfur here. Actually, why aren't we producing sulfur? I think it's because we don't have that much petroleum over here. Oh, there it goes. Uh, we have to have more than 10k petroleum for this to be switched on. So yes. Maybe I should have made it... No, that's fine. Okay, so petroleum is not looking that great. Um, and we don't have any more coal coming in for coal liquefaction. I don't think we've actually made an oil producing area in the rail network yet that isn't coal liquefaction. So that might actually be the key to accumulating coal at this point. Because we made the 
uh, heat shield factory, which is very demanding for uh, sulfur. Did the train system really f completely fill up? What? Oh, it's probably because of the shared priority system. So our train system has completely filled up uh, this station and it's left this one alone. <laughs> How's the wall coming? A hey, Terex, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The wall is complete. Uh, we don't have any more worries on Nalvis from biter attacks whatsoever. In fact, we've been having the bots build us some more solar panels over here, and that's almost complete as well. Um, one thing I could do in the meanwhile... I don't want to go too overboard with it, it's probably going to be very expensive. But on the other hand, we do have zero steel here, never mind. I was going to upgrade more of these walls to spiky walls. Um, so why don't we have any steel right now? What? Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing here? We've got mixed... That shouldn't be possible. We've got mixed recipes... ...in this furnace. This one looks fine. That one's off at the moment. That one's fine. That one's fine. How... It's literally all on the same wire. This should not be possible. Yep, I have literally no idea how these have different recipes. Um, currently, the signals that it's receiving is iron plate with uh, vulcanite blocks which makes sense because we do have vulcanite blocks uh, that has a higher priority than iron plate but I think we're making iron regular iron plate here anyway uh, same goes for stone brick and then steel and we've got all of the... Oh, hang on. I bet I know what it is. I I might know what's doing that. Um, so all of these crafting combinators are supposed to be set up like this. Um, keep crafting until zero. Once the signal is selected, the combinator will not change the recipe again until that signal reaches zero. So, um, my suspicion is uh, some of these crafting combinators do not have that setting. But it looks like they do. Oh, why is... Oh, that one's supposed to be in read mode. That's fine. Alright, let's go look at the ones that are different. Where are they? Is this it? Yeah. Keep crafting until zero. Keep crafting until zero. Um, our overflow chest isn't full, so it's not like this should be stuck. Um, this is literally the same wire, right? I don't... They're the same. They're the same picture. 
How did... How is it... And now this is going to keep smelting iron plate until we reach 100k iron plate or we run out of iron. I... Hmm. Can we maybe just stop with the stone for now? That was really weird. Also, it's not letting us switch over to the better iron recipe over here. Um, let's remove that for a moment. And that should have all of them smelting with... What? Oh, I know why. Oops. I don't really want to get rid of this signal even for a moment because it's going to stop the whole system from smelting iron as opposed to... well, it's going to switch over to steel. Maybe we should just let that happen. There's plenty of iron up here. Yeah, alright, fine. On to steel. Yeah, that was really weird. Um, maybe I should add a signal here that separates it all out so that we're only receiving the leftmost signal. That would actually be a really simple operation. We shouldn't need to do this, but it's very straightforward. Um, anything greater than zero, output anything, and it'll just pick whatever is the leftmost signal from the input signals, and spit that out. Alright, I guess, uh, I guess let's go ahead and patch all of these to make sure that doesn't happen again. Three, four, five, and I can do the wiring from here. Oh, I have to actually place the combinators first. Or I could remove... well, it's going to stop all the smelters when I do that. Oh well. Uh, this one is also in need of help. This one is fine, this one, and this one, and then we're going to copy-paste this, and then we'll just have to physically place the uh, combinators there. Already done this one. Alright, let's go for a little flight, shall we? If I had incredibly good timing, I could probably just drop all of these as I fly by. Speaking of timing... Drop that into performance mode, since our... UPS is dropping ever so slightly. Oh, we're still smelting up here? Wait, what? Oh, there's like, uh, these are full. Okay. Yeah, so one of the main, uh, sort of drawbacks... The more different items you're trying to smelt, uh the more stuff and more space you need to support the throughput for each individual smelter. Um, it's really kind of difficult to have them in nice, neat, compact rows like this uh, when you start adding more and more resources. 
All right, well, that should fix a few issues that we've had with the smelters. What is wrong with this one? It's not currently trying to smelt anything. Um, what? How is that one not connected? Where is... Where is it normally connected? This is really hard to see at night. So it goes all the way down there. And then comes around this way. And is connected like so. Okay. Is there some kind of problem? This wasn't the one that was having trouble, was it? Was this one? Why is it all negatives? Oh, there's a bunch of resources missing, but there aren't any resources missing. We've literally got every input resource except for washed cryonite, which we're not going to actually smelt here. Um, is this just not connected properly? So this, this shows me six signals, all the inputs. I feel like we should have seen this before, if this is the problem. I see every input except for vulcanite is here, so that seems totally fine. Our selected recipes would be copper with vulcanite. Oh, I messed up. We're trying to do copper with vulcanite, but there's no... Okay. I think I could have done this a little bit better. Instead of... Instead of putting this here, I believe we could have left that like so. And we've already got a combinator in place that can do this. Um, this is going to be anything greater than zero output anything. So, this gives us negatives for anything that we can't do. And then this only outputs positives. So we're currently wanting to do these five recipes. Well, that's not quite right. I um, don't really see them now because we're not filtering them through that one combinator. But there's a few recipes we're trying to do here, but you can see from the negatives. Uh, we've got a couple of conditions met that we can't make glass. Okay, so that means we can just change... All those. I think that's all of them. And this never had to be there. Is that the end? One, two, Three, four, uh, five, and six. Okay. That's looking better. This one just switched recipe, so the iron hasn't reached all the furnaces yet. Or maybe it's vulcanite. No? Oh, this one's full. It's waiting for room for output. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, that's right, because we changed the beacons to ratio this for steel. So the regular furnace, uh, the regular recipes, um, the output is bottlenecked on the belt. So we're doing 90 iron plate per second over here anyway. 
you can see why I wanted to redesign uh, or iterate on the Omni Smelter design anyway. Yeah, I think what we will do is the uh, three columns of 18 uh, smelters, and hopefully there's enough room for, even with uh, blue beacons, just nothing but speed beacons, uh, hopefully there's enough room for all of the output belts. Okay. Um, there is one condition that I'm sure will we'll meet the criteria of let's not smelt uh let's not make uh core mine uh, core fragments anymore if all four resources have items uh that are here for destruction then i think we can maybe stop doing core mining for a little bit So, let's see. I think I just have... Okay. I actually just thought of a way I could do this with only one more combinator. Um, so we could say... Red wire, does this reach? It does. So red wire links all of these outputs. And then we're going to say... Uh, if... Well, we're going to count the number of negative uh, inputs because these are getting the negative average. Uh, each less than zero, output one, n, and then if n uh, equals four, output red signal, We'll have to think of a better signal for this if we start using the um, rail network for multiple things. Um, so currently there are three, that is iron, copper, and stone. Fantastic. If that gets to four, we're going to output a red signal of one. And over here, let's see, what would be the simplest way to take that signal and do something with it? I think we'll just have to block all the input belts like so just barely doesn't reach. That's a little bit upsetting. Alright, let's do this a bit more tidy. Oh, it's... Yeah, no, let's not do that. So all of these are going to be, um, red signal is equal to zero. Cool. Actually, we could have had the, if we used the red wire, we could have had the, um, red signal feed directly into... Uh, this uh, 
latch right here and just switch the miners off immediately. Let's do that. That's going to be much neater. Actually, no, because then we can't change this uh, symbol later on if we want to. Okay. Just going to put those apart from everything else so we can sort of see its separate logic. Right, what's next? Uh, we did make Vulcanite, last thing we did. Uh, we needed more Vulcanite processing because the entire system was getting clogged on Vulcanite. And... I don't know what else. We haven't done a LDS build, and I know we had a reason to do that. So why don't we get started? Oh, I should probably take these core mining drills home as well. Alright, so what is beaconed LDS going to look like? Low density structure. Productivity modules. Uh, we do these in fours because beacons. Probably. How many inputs do we need? Four. But that's going to be two belts of input. Um. We'll just say a half belt for each input, and we have to do it something like this. I imagine blue inserters will be enough, we'll soon see. Uh, we need to give this power if we're going to... Uh, see how much we need with a rate calculator that is that is quite slow still all right let's see how many times we can multiply it out probably quite a few Do we have old modules here? Uh, that is getting close. We can do 22.5 items per second on half a blue belt. So I think we're just going to be able to use all of the space pretty much. This might be a little bit over. No, it's perfect. That is literally a perfect ratio. I hope we can fit this. So if we do it like that, outputs could go here, here. Don't think this is going to be a problem at all, actually. It's going to be one of the easiest builds I've done for a little while. I'm used to it being more difficult to do the uh, outputs in the middle because of... I guess because I just spent the last few hours trying to fit Omni Smelter together. All right, so let's, um, let's actually finish building this and then we'll multiply it out and see how much we can fit and how many train stations we'll need to support it. Uh, hoping we can just have the usual 
four train stations drop off at the northern end. And if this is half a belt, except for plastic, I think it is. Uh, no, it's ex except for steel. If this is half a belt for everything else, um, that means if we do it like this, we can't quite do it like that, but I think we have room in this instance, not like with the smelters I was messing with, to just move the splitter, one of these splitters back a bit. That should be fine. What? I know express, bleh, express. I know express splitter is in the way. That's why I pressed uh, shift click. Don't need chemical plants at the moment. Um, all right, let's head back, shall we? Hey, hi, away. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, so that goes there and there and there and there and so on. Oh, wait. No, that's that's not going to work, because this has to be a half belt. Okay. Whoops. And let's just copy that and flip it. And be confused. And that's going to have to look like that, I think. Do we have a nice spot to put uh, substations? Looks like that's going to fit really easily, actually. Except that we can't touch these uh, inserters up the end with a substation there. Alright, nice repeating pattern anyway. Okay, so if we do this four times, we're looking at 90 per second steel, 180 per second everything else. That is four blue belts. That might be a bit excessive. Four blue belts for three different resources. Um, we're doing four blue belts for sulfur over here and two for the others, and that's already uh, kind of a lot, trying to fit all the belt spaghetti. I don't know that I can really get away with three or four different resources all wanting four blue belts of output. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll just do a couple of these. Put some solar panels on the side so we're not wasting all this space. The regular block doesn't quite fit, unfortunately. But, yeah, it's, uh... Uh, LDS is really quite thirsty with beacons. So, is that it? I mean, we can really easily do it like this. Two blue belts of each output except for steel. On the other hand, if we do double this, um, the output is supposed to be down here. Wait, how much are we making? Uh, only 
per second. So if we double it, that's still less than one belt. So we don't have to use a lot of space for the output. So let's see, if we put this output as close as possible, maybe even put the station down here like we did with uh, uh, like we did with the heat shield pickup. Hey, so JMO, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Morning, t hacks. How are you today? Yeah, pretty good. The input is going to be quite the issue if you double it. Yeah, but on the other hand, I kind of want to accept the challenge. I want to see if we can do it. Um, I think I will start by copying this. And then it's very important that we turn off these constant combinators. I'll just get rid of the requests. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll, I give it like 50-50 that I give up and just do two blue belts for each resource. Um... But yeah, it would be just no challenge whatsoever for me to just copy-paste my usual uh, two, uh, two blue belt outputs and just connect them all up. I want to see if we can get this uh, well-placed enough. So that is the middle. And I think unless we move those substations down the bottom, that is as close as we can get. Uh, or maybe it's still a bit too close. I could have this go all the way down here, for example. And then go over this way. Uh, but let's suppose I don't do that for now. This one is going over here. Looks pretty good. Um... These can be a little bit different at the end of the line. Okay. So we need belt down here. Uh, the whole thing is the whole thing's going to be like less than a full belt. So if we were to put all of this on one side and then just do it like that, would that be okay? I think it would. Otherwise we're running into this underground over here. Or well, I suppose we could just move it up a little bit. That wouldn't be a problem either. Either way, we'll just leave it like that for now. And something similar over the other side. Oops. Cool. One more. 
more substation over this way. Okay, so that part's going to be pretty straightforward. The question is... Can we put four blue belts going into eight half belts for three different resources? Um, we sort of already have the template for... This is actually four belts for the um, stone brick, isn't it? Yeah, so we've already done this. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be. Isn't it four different resources? Uh, yeah, so... Um, everything except for steel, we need ten per second. Well, not ten per second. Uh, ten per recipe. And steel is only five, so... We can actually supply this whole thing with just two blue belts of steel. Um, it turns out it's actually really quite similar to uh, heat shielding in a way. Kind of. Well, in any case, we ended up needing uh, eight belts, about eight belts of sulfur. Um, we needed more than two belts of stone brick and only two belts of steel. It's still four times three belts for the other stuff, yes. And I think we are just barely going to pull it off. Uh, I, I think the exact same belt layout is actually going to be... Except for, like, the very end of it. I think we're going to end up with basically the same belt layout here. Let's use that to make sure we place it correctly. Oh, and let's make sure we don't summon any trains. That was a little bit close. I've run out of energy. I should leave this uh, portable RTG in place all the time, just so it's easier to swap that out. Oop a doop. What are we researching now? I think we're getting close to the point where we can't do any more research. In fact, we may have already hit that point. Oh wait, we've got rocket reusability. Looks like we're only going to be able to do one of each of these. The next one requires... Astronomic science. Uh, lab research speed? Why not? Why don't we do that first? That could have saved us a bunch of time. Um, and... Stronger explosives, flammables, bullet damage, laser damage... Sure. Worker robot cargo size. Go nuts. Careful you're copying the requests. Yeah, it was close. Probably not saving a bunch of time as the science and space is slow to produce en masse. Yeah. But we're definitely bottlenecking on the one lab that we have there at the moment. Okay. Gonna need a lot of belt. Oh, thank you. And I do mean a lot of belt. Oh, I need to fix my requests. Um, make it 1500 for now. And probably a lot more undergrounds as well. 
splitters, you seldom need more than a stack. I never even considered that I would end up using this exact same belt layout again. It's quite handy. I think that's everything. Did we... oh, never mind. Oh, we stopped making... we don't have enough LDS to keep destroying things. Uh, after this LDS build, I really need to set up a, a regular oil production area in the rail network. We're going through this belt even quicker than I expected. Also, very much bottlenecking on power. Maybe it would make sense to use a double block or just a whole separate area from the main uh, city bus section to do a Omni Smelter. Batteries are amazing? Yeah, they can be. The fact that batteries in Factorio have infinite uh, like output capacity, like output speed, um, means you pretty much have, you know, infinite fusion reactors for a finite period. Alright, this part's going to be a bit different, obviously. There may still be some challenges to setting up these inputs. Um, it may still prove troubling. If only batteries charged cascadingly. Uh, how so? Also, why are my bots not picking... Oh. Oh, we're still super bottlenecked on energy. Yeah, what do you mean by cascadingly? Oh, do you mean like the roboports, if they charged one at a time, we wouldn't get this burst of bot activity once the electricity reaches a certain amount, and then all the bots stop? You could take out one reactor and pump in even more batteries. Interesting. Yeah, instead of um, like just losing all the charge in a battery whenever you remove it as well. Okay, so... Um, it doesn't really matter which inputs are which with this. So I think we'll go... Like so. This is going to be more difficult, though, because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight inputs from four belts times two. I don't think we're going to have enough room. 
even though we got this one a little bit further down, what literally one tile further down? Um, so, well, we might. If that's going to go there, that goes there. And then this goes over here. And then that goes there, and that goes there. This goes here. Um, that's not going to work because that has to, has to go like that. And then I'm not sure how we're going to have room for certain other things. But let's let's continue this and see where it goes. Get rid of all that clutter just to reduce confusion for now. Eight mixed belts, yes indeed. Um so this one is gonna be these two. I think. Uh, not sure how that one's gonna. Okay, so this just has to be one belt, right? So that could go there. I'm just gonna put that there so it's more visible. Or this could go here, actually. That's fine. And then this goes over here, and that goes like that. You end up with the exact same layout. You could move the splitter forward a tile and make it wiggle one belt backward before becoming input. Um, I am confused, but probably. Also, I actually should have gotten more splitters as well. Let's go get some more stuff. I'm a bit concerned about the second splitter set that I've put down there. i sort of sticking out into the positions of belts 2 and 3, as opposed to 1 and 2. I don't know if I'm going to have room to sort of do 0 and 1 to 1 and 2 to 2 and 3 to 3 and 4, if that makes sense. Hey, Mucky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the yay. How you doing? So, if this is belts 1, 2, 3, and 4, this is 0 to 1, and this one is 2 to 3, and I don't think that's going to work out very well. Hey, Michael. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, it might be a lot easier... If I just spread these columns out a little bit, actually. Yeah, there should be plenty of room to do that. Um, if we move all of this stuff over, I can move this back. And we could have more than likely a few tiles between uh, each of these. Whoops, that was a bit too aggressive. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. So, if we split these up a bit, I 
I might just cut this and keep it over here in case I want to reference it again. This is going to make a lot of bot jobs. My batteries are going to cry again. Um, I suppose the question is how many tiles apart do we need this to be? If this goes here... And this goes here... And this goes here. Hold up. This belt. I'm going to turn off my robo port for a sec. So that goes there, that goes there. That doesn't seem quite right. No, this is a. Yeah, this is wrong. Okay. Cool. One belt becomes two half belts. This goes here. And then uh, this belt needs to go into this one. And this one. And this one doesn't have anywhere to go all of a sudden. Um, maybe, maybe if this were down here, that could keep going. I'm getting confused. That goes there, and that goes there, and that goes there, and that goes there. There might just be room to make this happen, but I'm getting skeptical. Uh, it seems like we're going to struggle, okay, you know, even considering that we might uh, split this up further apart horizontally. Um, even if we can do this, that's only half the job. Although fewer belts will be required for steel, but I don't think that's going to make a difference considering whatever steel, whatever's on the other side of the same belt as steel is going to need just as much room as any of these. Um... Also, I don't know where where this belt is going to get where it needs to go if these are blocking this. I don't think this is going to be possible. I'll give it a few more minutes before I give up. But I think we're going to end up just accepting that we're only going to fit uh, 80 machines because of the belt limitations. Alright, let's make the assumption that we're going to split these things up a bit. So... I wish I was in Super Editor for this part. How many tiles do we need to bring these apart to make it much, much easier? Probably just like... Well, may as well do as many tiles as possible. So this can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Probably 7 tiles to the right. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this one... Six tiles. Oh, seven, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. It should be symmetrical. Okay, so we can probably have... 
like two tiles between each of these. Which means we move this one four tiles over. One, two, three, four. And we move this one two tiles over. One, two. And then our bots work themselves to exhaustion until they go on strike. That really is going to take a moment. Maybe I should give him a hand. This is like five bot jobs every time I click. That's nine. Don't want to mess anything up. Oh, it also keeps... It, it also stops other bots from having to wait if you make sure you deconstruct things first. Kind of wish they would just do all of the deconstruct jobs first, but I understand that that's a lot more likely to just make them get stuck when your inventory is full. Okay, so this would go here, and then, um, do I want to start on these outside ones or inside ones? Does it make a difference? Not sure. Okay, and then this one. Could go here, maybe? That's not going to work. Do we actually have eight tiles here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, even with the substations. Uh, I think we need to start by splitting these up a bit. And this one can obviously be a little bit different if it comes to that. Um, if we, if we get that far is what I really meant. So, that's gonna go there. I guess it doesn't really make a difference with the middle ones, does it? Yeah, no. Okay. So this one is gonna go straight all the way over there. This one is gonna go up like so. And uh, that would have a splitter like so. And this stuff needs to be spread out a bit. I'm almost positive we're going to get to the point of 
making the four belts from either side here connect to everything. And then once we start trying to figure out steel plus, um, well, steel plus whatever, uh, we're going to realize there isn't a way to make that work, probably. Um, but for now, let's continue in the hope that's not the case. And it'll be an exercise in any case. I'm not sure that goes there, actually. This one would go here. And this one would go up here. Okay. That was a lot simpler. Maybe this is possible. Okay, slow down. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Finish placing uh, the inputs for wait what oh I see okay so that's gonna go like that that's gonna go like that it's gonna go like that and that goes there which means... Is that right? No, that's that's not right. This one should this one should end up over here. And then there should be one that mirrors this splitter. Um I think it should be these two. Permission please, thank you. What is this IE? Permission granted. Completely butchered design. Oh, the light mode. Ouch. Uh, that looks pretty good. Does it use more tiles than we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we don't have twelve tiles here. We have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine. Maybe. I suppose we could always shorten this, um, and then we would have plenty of room up here for merging. Uh, we could have like, instead of 20, we could have 16, which would be 32 uh, machines like this. That would be four times, four times all that, uh, significantly less than two blue belts for steel. And significantly less than four blue belts for everything else. We'd get 19 uh, low density structures per second. We'd very easily saturate the belt as opposed to having precisely the amount of stuff that all of the machines are going to use all the time. My top part assumes resources from left and right. Well, we can manage... Uh, we can... We can have steel come out this way, I think. Um, in any case, we've sort of got... Well, it's not going to be stone brick, but stone brick in this example ends up coming over here. Yeah, that might be a problem. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work out, but it's kind of fun trying to figure it out. Sort of. 
Um, that one is going to go there. I think that's right. Yep. And then we need a mirror for this splitter. Um, that looks like a little bit of a problem, but it's not too bad. And then we need to mirror that one as well. Okay, cool. So that actually is... We could obviously tidy it up a bit and make it look nicer, but that is uh, half of the job done. But I don't think the other half can get done. Veldite, please tell me they're diagonal. I've finished my smelter design during the night. Not sure yet. What I'm going to do with 16 blue belts of copper. Nice. The other two resources could use a smaller design. There's only one resource that could use a small design, and that's steel. Uh, three resources for LDS take 10 inputs in space exploration. But I really don't think there's a way... First of all... Having to split this into eight, uh, into eight half belts to begin with is a problem. And we also have to, uh, we have to merge and split four belts from up here into eight and get those into... I am extremely skeptical as to whether this can be done. But maybe undergrounds will make it more possible than expected. We could make that a bit more symmetrical, perhaps. It looks terrible. T Hex, are you interested in doing a live reaction? Uh, depends. What to? Uh, sick, sick, ne sick new year. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, if we make all these undergrounds, we might find ourselves with a lot more space for the other resources. A four, four and a half minute YouTube video. Uh, what what's it about, Factorio? I don't actually have the um, I don't actually have things set up to stream anything but a game at the moment. I'd have to figure that out. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, that is not going to reach. Why don't we do these ones all the same? So it looks a bit more consistent. As consistent as we can get, anyway. And I've run out of undergrounds. Alright, let's go get some more stuff, I guess. I don't think I need another 1500 blue belt. Didn't mean to place this over here. Don't need that anymore. Wait, a four and a half minute video about Factorio? Is this the one I saw from yesterday? Was this the, um, was this the very fine base someone made with, like, uh, burner miners that seemed to be mining uranium and also nuclear fuel? First video? Yeah. Yeah, I already sort of, sort of reacted to it yesterday. I just flicked through it a little bit. Uh, you couldn't see it on screen, but, um... 
that was truly horrifying. I mean, uh, however you want to play Factorio, that's, if you're having fun, that's fine. That's good, but... Um, suffice to say, if you like things that are neat or symmetrical or good ratios or anything like that, I think that video may actually be a mental health hazard. It's a bit like, uh, oh, what's that person's name? I think it was Let's Game It Out. They did some videos on Satisfactory that I found mostly pretty funny, except if someone kind of like that went to the trouble of making a bunch of stuff that was literally physically impossible and making it look like that was still working, Let's game it out of disturbing, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. What are we doing now? So we need... I, I don't think, like, this is a good starting point for resource number three. We need eight half and half belts. And we need them to go here, 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 here. Um, it's obviously not going to be difficult to patch this much. But that's not really our problem. Should we try and do all the merging here, and then just sort of split it away? I don't think there's room. Like, maybe we could have these undergrounds come out over here, but then we need, um... We need eight tiles, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, maybe. Okay. Well, let's just see where this goes. So, if that looked like that, it's obviously not going to work quite like that. We could maybe ditch or move the display. This can go over here. And then... That is going to need even more space. You guys can't hear... No, okay, cool. Alright. Don't know if there's enough room. That is very close. And then there's definitely not going to be enough room for this over here. Take care, Sir JMO. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you have a good day at work. Hmm. We could probably also do something similar to save a little bit of space. Uh, for this input. Um, whatever the case. No, how much closer can this be? I think that's actually already as close as it can get, because of this part. Unless we move 
this a little bit. So we can move all of this over one tile. This one goes here, this one goes there. We're never gonna like do all, merge all the half belts in this space, but maybe if the belts head out towards where they need to go and then merge when they get to their destination, maybe there's a chance this could work. We've gotten further than I expected with this mess. You've probably already told that, but why are there constant combinators and electrical circuit near chests and inserters? Uh, you mean like this stuff? Uh, so this is a balanced unloader. Um, the green wire on the... Uh, ignore this stuff for now, this is just for talking to logistic train network and it gives us a kind of a basic display of how many train loads of stuff is in these chests. Um, on the left, uh, all of this, all of these chests are connected to one green wire that goes into a arithmetic combinator that spits out the average and the inserters on the red wire, they read directly from the chest that they are connected to and compare it to the average. And if you're doing a balanced loader, you want to say, if we're less than or equal to the average, you're allowed to pick something up. Uh, if we're unloading, we say, if you're greater than or equal to the average, please output something. Um, instead of doing like a divided by 24 output A for average and then comparing against that, uh, we're basically just saying each divided by negative 24 because it's 24 chests, that will give us the negative of the average of what's in these chests. Um, when you connect inputs like this in Factorio, like if we say, um, this one and this one, let's say we have Three iron plate over here, four iron plate over here. What it's going to do is implicitly add those up. If you connect it to a power pole, um, it'll show you both of those signals as separate. But when it comes to giving it to a combinator or an inserter, for example, as far as this device is concerned, this is just seven iron plate. So what we're getting uh, when we output the negative average from this arithmetic combinator versus the positive amount of what's actually in the chest, uh, we get, if, if we're at exactly average, the, um, the value that this inserter receives is going to be zero. So then we say, if sulfur is greater than or equal to zero, the stack inserter is enabled. And we're also going to change the stack size based on how far ahead of the average we are. So if we're at least, uh, our current maximum stack size is eight. So if we're at least um, eight sulfur ahead uh, of the average, then the stack size is going to be 8. You might notice though these chests are empty and our stack size is currently 8. That's because we're pretending that each chest has uh, 12 more sulfur in it. So what this allows us to do is have basically have all these stack inserters outputting at full speed when they're at the average. Uh, without this, we'll end up getting a stack size of 1 um, if everything is perfectly equal, and then you end up getting all of the stack inserters 
going very slowly. Um, so by pretending that there's a little bit more in each chest with this... Why is this switched off? Um, by pretending... Oh, I switched it off, didn't I? <laughs> uh, by pretending there's a little bit more in each chest, uh, we won't go much below the average, but it's enough to make sure that we go at full speed. And playing around with the stack sizes basically has an effect of uh, smoothing out the gaps that you may end up with. Um, if you have a balanced unloader with like stack inserters, um, to the point where under certain conditions, why is that there? Under certain conditions with like a very specific set of, you know, two blue belts of total output bottleneck, for example, uh, it could be the difference between saturating the belt and having gaps in the belt, um, which is why we ended up building that in the first place. Um, yeah, so does that answer your question, or do you have any other questions? Thank you, that's really nice. I've never used this arithmetic or any other combinators, but I might try now. Nice, glad to hear it. Um, balanced loaders, I think, this is kind of as advanced as they get. Um, the most basic version you probably see around looks like this. Just each divided by 24. Okay, let's, let's assume there's only one type of resource in here. We're not going to worry about each, which some of these special symbols can be a bit counterintuitive or confusing for new players. Let's just say sulfur divided by 24 output A for average, and then you're going to say uh, sulfur has to be greater than or equal to average. That has the exact same effect, except you don't get to play with the stack sizes that way. Um, but yeah. Uh, Balanced loaders and unloaders, I think, are a really good example of, like, it's complicated, but not too complicated. It's really more... I, I think it's really more the factorio-specific stuff that's not necessarily intuitive, or that you wouldn't have learnt somewhere else, like if you'd played with redstone in Minecraft, for example. Um... The way the wires and everything work in Factorio, it takes a bit of learning. Um, but other than that, it's really not, you know, the most complicated thing. Is making notes? Good. You mentioned display on the right end. Is that just for information? For my information, yes. So a full train load of sulfur, I think, is 8,000. Um, each, you can, uh, you don't have to worry about this too much. This is basically just, if you're, if you've only got one resource here, this is just whatever resource it is. Uh, so each divided by 8,000 output yellow signal. Uh, since we can fit 8,000 sulfur in a train, we're going to get a signal of how many train loads we've got as yellow signal. Um, and then we're going to say if yellow signal is greater than or equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then turn on the light and use colors. Um, in this case we're saying if anything is greater than or equal to 1. Uh, some of this circuitry here going to LTN is just because we're being a bit fancy and using a single train stop for multiple resources. Um, so we have to sort of separate some of the logic. Uh, whenever you see something like each times one output each, that's just because we either need a one-way piece of wire or we need to delay this information by one tick. That's not what's happening right here. It's a one-way piece of wire. Um, and we're just... Uh, this might be wrong, actually. Yeah, I think... 
Oh, I remember. This is fine in this instance, but we ran into a use case where this wasn't good enough because uh, this station up here is asking for iron and copper, and it's actually possible to pick that up at one location at the same time. Um, so we had to add some arbitrary circuitry to just say, ask for 8,000 iron or copper if the amount of iron is low enough. Otherwise, LTN will schedule like half a load of iron and half a load of copper sometimes. Take care, Vildo. Um, but yeah, that's a nice basic display. It's actually, I find it quite useful, uh, especially things like fluids. We can see here very clearly, very quickly that they're all balanced and that we don't have that much of any given fluid here. Um, you can get a little bit more fancy and actually do a numerical display, but as you can see, it doesn't necessarily pop like it, it doesn't give you the general idea of the information you need that quickly um, also I think some of these are off by one digit I, I still haven't gotten around to fixing that but that's not going to be that big of a deal I really do like the line displays of lights like this is telling me we're full on sand we're full on glass we're almost full on iron plate we've got we've clearly got no iron ore uh copper and stone are pretty full and so on okay is there a snowball's chance that we could actually connect all these up as half belts to where they need to go. I don't think so. In fact, the more I look at this, uh, the less I think so. I think we're just going to end up reducing the amount of machines we have over here. Though, I don't want to give up and just halve it. I think we'll get rid of, like, uh, four of these at the top. In other words, one set that touched the beacons. And then maybe we'll use the, uh, uh, use that layout that, uh, who was it that posted it? I think it was the JMO. Completely butchered design, yeah. It looks pretty clean. Considering that I'm not even seeing how we're going to get the first pair of belts over here. I'd say we're in trouble. jump all of these, right? Just barely. Let's say that goes there. That's one. And then this one. Uh, this belt should probably go over this way, right? Which would mean this belt wants to meet up with this one. If only this tile didn't have to be here, we could connect like so. And that would actually be very straightforward. Maybe if I move it, move all of these down a tile?
Mm. And then that would be there. Okay. I'm still very skeptical as to whether we could make this work. And it's also going to be a shrine to the spaghetti monster. Okay. May as well continue. That would have to go there, I think. And this is going to have no room. <laughs> Was that for the spaghetti monster shrine? Uh, we could probably move all of this up a bit. Yes, indeed. Okay. Oh, uh, these should have undergrounds. Yay, indeed. Okay. If I... If I want this belt and this belt to merge, how on earth is that going to happen? Oh, coronal mass ejection in eight sec, uh, eight minutes. Wait, yeah, it is eight minutes, right? Yeah, eight minutes. Otherwise, it would have happened already. I'm pretty sure we've got way more than enough energy to stop it this time. I just joined What's Happening. I was just playing this game, but I have never seen this, never been this far. Um, currently, we are, against all odds, hoping that we can fit... Um, okay, so if this... Well, the, the number of machines we've got here... Uh, to make low density structures, we would need 180 glass, copper plate, and plastic bar per second, and half that much steel. We've got two of these input uh, because we're bottlenecked on uh, blue belts, which do 45 items per second. We need eight half belts uh, for each resource except that steel can go slower. Um, we're trying to fit the belts at the top of this monstrosity, uh, trying to fit them all together for the inputs so that we can fit this entire thing in one train block. And I don't think we're gonna succeed. Um, we are painfully close, but I'm pretty sure Merging steel and whatever resources this is, this is going to be, one of the resources that we need twice as much of. Um, we need like eight belts from each of them to merge into a half belt for each resource and go here, 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 and so on. Um, And I've been getting kind of carried away trying to solve this, even though I said from the beginning, I don't think it's going to be possible. So currently we would probably want that belt to merge with this belt, though it doesn't strictly have to be. Well, that part was pretty straightforward at least. As long as... Eight different belts merge with eight di different belts from these two. That'll be what we're looking for. Um, and that'll have to go down here. So on the plus side, we just solved one more of these. That leaves one, two, three, four, five, six to go. And I'm pretty sure there won't be room. Yeah, I'm only at green, red, and grey science, I think. I've had blue before, but that's a save without monsters. Oh, and even at the point I'm at, it's hard. Gotta start somewhere. 
Uh, welcome, welcome, Halen Shadow. Hope you're doing well. I don't think I have room up here to split the steel a little bit sooner. Actually, I do. But then I, I would have to move these substations a bit. I mean, we can always use medium poles if it comes to that. Uh, we could split the steel here. We could have... Uh, we could have four belts coming down there. One, two, three. We could move the combinators around. The eight belts could start up here. I'm beginning to think this may actually be possible. But before we do that, we'll see what we can do down here. Um... So that's actually going to have to spaghetti around this way. Is that necessary? No, not even a little bit. Okay. How... How... how? How are we going to... Well, let's make a bit more room over here. And what if one of these... came down this way? And then... doesn't quite work. We would need it to look like this. Okay, I keep trying to focus one belt in particular and then I see a solution for a different belt. So maybe I should just keep doing what solutions I can find and hoping that it doesn't paint this into a corner. Oh, two minutes. I need to research trains and I'm almost there. The reason I need it is because my iron is running low and I'm not near any iron. Yeah, once you start getting iron coming in in trains, um, the scale of the game changes a bit. Absolutely. Um, so what if this goes here, and then this goes here, oops, we've actually just got four to go now. One, two, three, and four. But it's looking more and more... Oh, there's already an underground there. Uh, this way? Okay. What if... What if these two merge over here? And then there were three. Uh, Yun Jesus, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're so close, yet so far, I think. Um, maybe the shape of these splits will have to change. Or maybe we'll end up having to split this stuff up there and then bring it down there, maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't know how we can even get these belts out of here at this point. Is that is that much even possible? I don't think it is. 
I think, I think we're approaching the end of the road. Um, there's no room for that there. Hmm. Kalen, that is where the fun really starts. Just need to rearrange my base. It's kind of messy. <laughs> yeah, always. Um, I'm actually playing a mod called Space Exploration. And even for experienced players, it's kind of like being new at the game again. Because some of the uh, production chains are significantly different. And there's also just a whole lot of new stuff. So, bearing in mind that I was pressured by biters into not taking up too much room, uh, even as someone who builds bases that look more like this, and like this, uh, this is what my first, this is what my starter base looked like for my first playthrough of space exploration, because Burner inserters require iron sticks and single cylinder engines and single cylinder engines once gear and iron plate and regular inserters want small electric motors and burners and small electric motors want gear, iron plate and copper cable. Uh, electronic circuits want wood or stone tablet. Stone tablet wants uh, stone brick. All of this is different from vanilla. And I sort of tried to have a bit of a bust to start with, but that fell apart pretty quickly. You should try Fantorio. Fantorio is slow. What is Fantorio? Spaghetti day? Yes, indeed. Hello, my other account got hacked, so couldn't watch you. Ah, uh, rip. Sorry, your account got hacked. Young Jesus. Um, also, Esmok Aditan, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so this splitter right here doesn't have to be exactly in that location, but I don't think that's going to help. Every time I go to do that and think it's going to take like 10 minutes, then I'm doing it for like an hour... Also, they meant Factorio instead of Factorio. Fantorio is a big mod pack with a lot of slow burner stuff. It's a lovely mod. It's a very sarcastic tone of voice. In a very sarcastic tone of voice. Oh no. Uh, Crestorio 2 has a very slow start. It sounds like this is more so. Um, I didn't think, if this was going to not be possible, I didn't think we would get this close. This is kind of heartbreaking. Didn't know you use mods. Yeah, currently we, um, I think my mods thing is slightly wrong because I don't remember enabling... Where is it? Bottleneck Light, which is just a mod that gives you like a little red, green, or yellow light on assembly machines, for example, to tell you if they're working or if their output is blocked or if they don't have enough resources. Just the same color light that you see right now with the red light saying item gradient storage. Uh, but other than that, it's basically just space exploration and a few quality of life mods. Space exploration is a really big uh, mod pack um, that kind of changes a lot and gives you a jet pack. What does crafting combinators do? Uh, crafting combinators allows us to have omni smelters, even though you actually have to set a recipe for industrial furnaces. You can use it to read or write and change the recipe of uh, some kind of assembly machine. So let's see if I can find one that's easier to see. 
They're all hidden behind medium poles with this build. But uh, this little combinator right here, you point it at, for example, an assembly machine. And, whoops. You feed it a signal, like iron gear wheel, and it sets the recipe. And that's basically it. There's a bunch of options, and it has a overflow chest, which if you set the recipe and there's items in the machine, it'll spit the items back out into this chest if you want, or you could have it just destroy the items. Um, but yeah, dynamically change the uh, recipes of machines with uh, circuit conditions. Seems pretty robust, absolutely. Nick Knock, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Funny thing is, the last thing I did before hopping off Factorio was look at mods, and the main one I was looking at was the space exploration one. I would probably suggest you play through vanilla before space exploration, just because it is... Uh... It is a lot more, shall we say. All, all of this research in red is... Um, I mean, I've played Factorio for years. I'm kind of taking my time with space exploration, but so much of this stuff, I don't have a single clue how to make astronomic catalogue, for example. Well, tell you what, let's look at the production chain for... Uh, rocket science pack. We need empty barrels for some reason. Satellite telemetry is from launching... This is kind of like the regular space science almost. Uh, when you launch regular rockets in space exploration you get these back. Uh, solid rocket fuel, vulcanite block, machine learning data, chemical gel, um... Here we're making uh, machine learning data, which requires blank data card and cool thermofluid. This thing cools thermofluid to negative 10 degrees. This thing makes thermofluid. It requires all of these things, including cosmic water. Cosmic water over here. Here requires water and lube. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, what else? Uh, blank. Uh, polished data storage substrate is part of the blank data card, I believe. No. Where's the blank data card? I actually don't remember. Oh, here it is. Uh, blank data card requires polished data storage substrate, advanced circuit and copper. Polished data storage substrate requires rough data storage substrate and chemical gel. Uh, chemical gel is cosmic water and petroleum. Uh, rough data storage substrate plus uh, comes out of glass and iron plate, but it also makes a waste product. Um, yeah, that's most of, that, that's most of rocket science pack. And the next type of, uh, space science that we need to make is a bit more complicated. Yeah, I don't plan on getting mods until I beat the game normally. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, especially when it comes to it's something like space exploration. Um, we could probably move these undergrounds a little bit. Don't know how much that's going to help. We could not really have. Wait, where is this underground from? Oh, cool. Now we've got a broken underground somewhere. Ugh. 
That's not what I wanted to hear. Wait, this is... Oh, this is just wrong. Okay, that might help. That... That might help a lot. Well, it might get us at least one more belt to work before we have to abandon this project. Uh, if this one can escape over here, and this one can go this way, and this one can't go anywhere unless we move that substation, which I would hate to have to move our lovely neat substation, but if it becomes the difference between making this spaghetti mess work and not, I will do it in a heartbeat. Um, this belt here needs to merge with one of these. If this goes over here, that will take up the minimum of space. Oh, this is actually happening. Okay. What if that goes there? And that goes there. That goes there. There and that goes there. This and this way. Okay. Alright. And now where the hell is this belt going? Um, probably this belt should go down here. And this one should go somewhere else, maybe. Maybe. What rate calculator do you use if you do? Uh, it is literally just called rate calculator. Research, one of them just finished, yep. We're currently polishing off the last few things that we can research where our most complicated or highest tier research uh, science pack is called a rocket science pack. Um, I think we're running out of things that we can do with that very quickly. This one is a weird kind of infinite research where... So in space exploration, logistic bots crash sometimes. And depending on which planet you're on, they crash more or less often. Um, this doesn't actually change whether they crash or not. But whether, when they do crash, they deal some damage to your base. So, not that exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot of research that we can continue to do at this point. We can do some bullet, uh, physical weapon speed and damage. Oh, we can do biolo biological catalog. I missed that one. And then we can open up biological science packs. Fantastic. Doesn't look like there'll be any more research after that that we can do so far. Uh, productivity module 4. I had no idea that these were doable at this point. So I could have been building... Well, they... Oh, they require exotic resources. Machine learning data we've already got. Uh, this one requires Holmium, which I don't have, but it's efficiency module. It doesn't matter that much. This one requires Iridium, which we've got on Mars, but we haven't bothered exploiting it yet. So I could have been building these sections, uh, building all my stuff to be ratioed for level 4 modules already. But I don't really want to bother with that until we've got at least a couple more tiers. But yeah, I didn't think... Uh, I didn't think we could research that much just yet. Hey, Sigma Beam. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's a setting. When you start a new game, look for it in the last tab. Research queue always. Yes. 
If you forget to change that, you'll have to launch a rocket with a satellite to unlock the research queue. More like leg, 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 maybe? <laughs> okay. <laughs> welcome, Zura Zoldic. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How you been? What's Ligma? Uh, Ligma is a very mature and serious thing to say. Can I get this belt to go somewhere useful? Probably not. I wonder if I could... Okay, we're getting into some serious spaghetti territory here, but if it comes to that, I could have belts going through this stuff. Oh no. It's a deadly disease. <laughs> Who is going to tell him the real answer? Someone, I hope. Uh, where is this going? Oh, I see. I could probably move this one down a bit, and that might might make things a bit simpler. So how many more belts do we need to get somewhere? I think it's literally just... Wait, why are there two of these and one of these? Oh, because I... No? Uh-oh. Um... Oh, I messed that up. Okay, that's fine. That goes there and that goes there. Fantastic. Okay, that goes and merges with that. That goes and merges with that. This doesn't go anywhere yet. This one goes and merges with this one. And goes here. Uh, one, two, one, two. Okay, yeah, that does make sense. Okay, good. Ligma trauma, yeah. Oh. Oh wait, yeah, we definitely need that one to go down there. And then I don't know where this could possibly go. If we change this one... So that goes over there. Oh, that's a weird bit of belt missing. And then that doesn't actually help at all. Ligma is a crime. Okay. I, th I think, apart from having to do some really weird spaghetti, we are just one belt away from... Oh, wait, 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 wait. This can go over here. Okay, okay, so these two... We could probably change how this bit works. Um, how is this one going to go somewhere? Can't go up there. And also this one is going to struggle to escape. Okay. This is some next level spaghetti. So I have to remember this one isn't merged yet. This one is. I'm just going to leave that there actually. I don't know how we're going to get these belts somewhere useful, but... Maybe we should belt them over here first. That one's already complete. This one, these two don't have anything yet. 
This one could go up here. I wonder if this would be more straightforward. I feel like that would look a bit better as well. So that could go here. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Need that to go like that, to go like that. And we need to merge something into this belt. Like so. Max, remind me to show Kitten. Okie dokie. Don't commit Ligma. Ligma balls. Okay then. This goes here, this goes here, and then can we get this one? If I had the longer underground belts, we could do that. May as well make a bit more room like so. I think we're going to have to spaghetti some of these like way down through here, for example. Feels a bit like a crime. But on the other hand, getting all of this to work in this space feels like an accomplishment. I should have done this in sandbox mode because if we build this entire thing and then see that, like, one belt doesn't actually go where it, we think it does. That's going to be painful. Uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one are already complete. It might be simpler if this one came here, but then I don't know how... Oh. No? Yes, maybe. These two could merge. That doesn't quite fit here. We could do this one down here. Don't know if that helped anything, actually. Be spaghetti, do crime. <laughs> yes. The way you said it slowly to make sure it wasn't a trick, which is not supposed to be. <laughs> so, is the Omni Smelter the only thing you use those crafting combinators for? Trying to think of other use cases. Uh, so far, it's the only thing I've used the crafting combinators for. Oh, wait. Not quite. That that was a lie. Um, uh, I've also I've also got a single delivery cannon over here. You select recipes like delivery cannon capsule, stone brick, or concrete, or any of these things, and it consumes uh, one delivery cannon capsule and delivers a single stack of whatever resource it is. But that goes up to our uh, sushi belt, basically. And this big container that puts things onto the sushi belt, where we're using this uh, signal transmitter to transmit back down to base on the planet, what we've got for each resource, we're saying here if low density structures is less than 100, um, output one. Oh, it's output one recipe delivery cannon capsule low density structure. Uh, so we've got similar things for all of these. If we're 
if we're down to less than 100 of any given resource, we fire up um, a stack of it, and this is just a requester chest with one stack of each. So that's pretty useful. Um, a little bit better than having to build six of these, or 24 of them, or however many. Uh, you can also... I haven't tried this yet, but technically, theoretically, with like a single assembler, uh, a single chemical plant, a single refinery, it'd probably be extra difficult with the fluids, although you can make it destroy fluids. Um, but theoretically, it might be possible to make a factory out of just like one of each machine. Um, and you could just set recipes based on what you need. You could go through an entire production chain or even build a little bit of everything just from a few machines. You want to hang out with Cho. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, can we spaghetti this? Also, that could definitely connect over there. That's fine. Oh, this one should probably just go here. Wait, no. This is... This is just steel, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's just steel. Stops, think, ignores Joe to stay safe. <laughs> yes, safety first. Um, are we actually... Okay, this is merged. And this is a half, and this is a half. We need to bring those two halves together, and we need to get this merged belt to go to somewhere useful. Um... Don't know how possible that really is without going all the way around, but maybe we'll just do that. We've already opened Pandora's box with this kind of spaghetti. Why not embrace it? This has been an, an adventure. Wait, I probably shouldn't even go this way. I should keep going through. Um, so is this merged already? It is. Okay. So that could go here. Or it could go here. Um, I don't see a way to go up this way if we do that. Let's just suppose for now... Uh, this one's going to go over here. Oh. That's fine. And then... I could be wrong, but I think that just leaves this belt and this belt that we need to bring together and bring it over here. I don't necessarily see how we're going to accomplish either of those things, but surprises may be in store. Actually, that could go there. If we bring it down here, it's got nowhere to go. We can't underground this way. Oh, we can underground through here, though. Okay. Okay. This is... This is going somewhere. We need this belt... to escape. And 
and that's really all that we need. I wonder if... I don't think that lets us move this up at all. I don't think that accomplishes anything. Kind of makes it worse. Wait, where was this going? Uh oh. Uh, I think I've confused myself. That merges. That merges. That merges. That merges. Oh, there we go. Oh, we could maybe... No, that's already taken. Second column, left one. So the underground to the left. Yep. Hey, Vin Shady. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hmm. Uh, I think we might end up having to use our last resort. Yeah, I forgot about this. This is, um, this could do it. That doesn't reach down there. To oh, it does. It does. <laughs> We're doing this. This is happening. Okay. I don't think we can have this belt come out here, can we? Maybe if we change this part. No. Um, or maybe if we have if that goes there, that goes all the way over there, and we're trying to merge it with this one, and our destination is here. Um. Uh. Okay. All right. Okay. That doesn't actually make room for this just yet. I think we're doing it. I think this is it. Looks like a normal TX design to me. How dare you? Wow, that's brutal. Um, now I can't fit a substation to power this stuff. That's upsetting, but at the same time, I think we did it. We're gonna need a bunch of medium poles for this. I don't think... Wait, we can get a substation up here. Does that do the job? Oh, it does. It does. Thank goodness. Heal? Oh, he he. This belt setup looks slightly complicated. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed it does, Rocky. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. I think... I think it's finished, and I have kind of a headache trying to remember if we've checked everything. And I'm not going to be confident that this is finished until... until we bring stuff here with LTN. You just removed an inserter when you deleted the medium power pole. Okay, 
Thank you. Morpheus is out. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Where is the missing inserter? Oh, I see it. Run it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this one's going to be steel. Um, we also need... Uh, glass, copper, and plastic. I don't want to put all the white things on one belt. I feel like it's going to be harder to see. Um, so why don't we do glass or copper? Copper and steel often end up on the same belt anyway. I feel like this is traditional. So this is going to be copper and steel. And copper. And then... Uh, we probably don't have to do that extra bit of circuitry that we had to do up here. No, there's no way that you pick up copper plate and steel plate at the same time. Okay, this should be fine. Um, request stack threshold is 160. In other words, do not bother unless you're bringing a full train load. Uh, steel... And copper plate. So here comes those resources. So that means over here we're going to have glass and plastic. Let's do plastic at the top. So we'll have the long white things on the top. Make this white. Uh, plastic stacks to 100 in space exploration, so this is going to be 16k. Uh, this should be 16k. This, well, it doesn't even matter unless we replace the digital display. Well, it's not a digital display, it's a light display. We'll worry about that later. This one is going to be glass. Don't forget to change... That's in a weird spot. Uh, don't forget to change these ones. Plastic. Plastic. And go. Wait, was that correct? Enable, disable, set stack size. Yes. So that should be that. Um, and we need to set this one to glass. And glass. Oh, that should do it. Now we just need to say the same thing we did over at the other combinator. Uh, 160, and these all stack to 100, so it's negative 115,200, and glass, all right, here comes our steel, top left belt is not connected, maybe, we'll soon find out. Instead of going into design mode, just have four items of each resource in the boxes and check if the first assembler picks them up. Uh, we'll see. We need to actually connect this part. Probably could put this a little further from the edge, but that's fine. Copper is looking okay so far. Well, actually, I have no doubt copper and glass are going to get where they need to go. So we've got steel. Steel, 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 steel. 
and steel. Fantastic. And is it... I didn't even plan for this, but... Steel is actually on the outside belt every time. Huh. That's kind of cool. So now we're just waiting on... Uh, glass and plastic. Here comes the glass. Oh. I forgot this part again. Is this as far as this reaches? Yeah. Okay. What a glorious spaghetti mess. And there should already be a train uh, on the way here. Why is this? Oh. The yellow light normally indicates LTN. This confused me for just a moment. Uh, what color should represent glass? I think blue. There we go. And here comes our plastic. The moment of truth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do believe that's it. That could be moved up a bit. We did it. <laughs> Remember two hours ago when I said, yeah, I think this isn't going to work, but I'll give it just a few more minutes. Oh, this doesn't need an underground. That looks a little bit better. This is amazing. <laughs> Worth it? <laughs> yeah. Well then, I'm going to actually leave now. All right, take care. Thanks, uh, thanks for dropping by, Halen. Have a good one. I'm gonna go, I don't know what time it is for you, but it's 3am for me, aka late. Getting tired. Yeah, for me it is 7pm now. Uh, have a good sleep, Palin. And here comes the A-train. Oh, hi you Sora. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. Fantastic. That is possibly the most terrifying spaghetti I've ever had to build. It's kind of glorious. We are blessed by his noodly appendage. Fantastic. Okay, so that will be... Uh, we're actually missing some inserters right now, but that'll be 23.76 uh, low density structures per second, assuming that we can support the inputs indefinitely. Let's go pick up some more stuff. And we'll drop off the... There's actually quite a lot of inserters that are missing here. Each machine only needs 1.1 of any given item per second. 2.25 if you count the shared belts. So a yellow inserter would actually be sufficient here. But since it's express belts, a blue inserter is a good idea anyway. Because unless the belt is completely compacted and stopped. Um, actually, now that I think of it. Yeah, so 180 glass per second. Four blue belts. Glass, copper, and plastic. Half as much as steel. 
we actually need all of that throughput to keep up with this thing going at full speed. Um, which, of course, it's not going to do until we finish building the output. But also, I kind of want to... I kind of want to fire it all up at once and watch it happen. Uh, let's... That was more fast inserters than I was going to pick up, but since the bots are trying to steal them, let's just go. We can almost position ourselves to place everything automatically. That's a beautiful sound. Why is this? Oh, the output is full. And just to confirm, the entire thing still produces far less than... Actually, barely more than half a blue belt, so... We can definitely split it onto half a belt on each side. And connect this up like so. Once we've finished placing all the inserters... We actually didn't need to use splitters here because we could have just had the belt uh, squiggle in and out. I don't like that little hole in the nice, neat array of substations, but it's, it's a worthy price to pay for making the spaghetti actually possible. All right, all the machines have... I want to wait until the machines have stopped. Why is there no plastic here? Probably because we've run out. There should be a... I think there's a few plastic trains on the way, actually. What's going on with this one? Um, what? Why have you got sulfur? What? Let's go have a look, I guess. Oh, we're full on sulfur at the heat shield factory. That's probably good, except there's no steel. That's not good at all. Okay, we'll have to address that later. That thrust speed? Uh, we can get some more. Alright. I can't imagine a use case where we have 32 sulfur in each of these cargo wagons before it came to pick up 16,000 uh, plastic. We do have systems at our depots to empty the trains on the off chance they come back with something, but those are all empty right now. They would have to be backed up completely in order to still have a problem. Normally, when we get a problem like this, there's some domino effect where a different problem has caused this problem. But I don't... I don't know where... where this train might have gotten some random sulfur. It didn't stop here waiting to get over here or something, right? No, that shouldn't have been possible. Also, we've got 
Really? 12? 12 sulfur remaining. 24 in total remaining in this train. And it's keeping... It's keeping this train here. I don't know why... Don't tell me. I think I know why this happened. It doesn't solve the other problem, but... I think we've got some surprise storage right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven inserters have some sulfur in them. Which is effectively a little bit of extra storage over here that doesn't get counted by the circuitry. So, because we set LTN to completely fill this station, it probably did so faithfully. And meanwhile, we had inserters like this sticking out. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we had inserters like this sticking out, so there's actually... You know. Wait, no, this shouldn't have happened if... A train should only be sent here if the chests are not full. So we shouldn't have an inserter stuck here trying to insert a little bit of extra sulfur and have a train being scheduled to come here. Oh. This one has slightly less. Okay, we've got a balanced unloader, but for one thing, unless you set the stack sizes to one for every inserter, it's not going to be perfectly balanced. For another thing, we're also offsetting it slightly so the inserters can go faster. So between that... It still doesn't account for sending 8,000 sulfur here. Right? Well, whatever the case, I'm just gonna... ...slightly reduce the amount of stuff that we ask for. Let's make this... Um, let's lower that a little bit more. Hmm, so this, the exact same thing seems to have happened over here, with slightly different numbers. I'll just take that off your hands. Yeah, I'm still not exactly sure how that happened, because... Well, yeah, no, okay, we should be... Almost exactly one train short of completely full when LTN creates the schedule. Is it even possible? No. We wouldn't have had the inserters stuck like this when... when the schedule was created. But I think just the very slight imbalance combined with asking for the absolute maximum combined with not consuming this stuff down here because the steel train wasn't coming because the sulfur train is in the way. Um, all of that added up to create that situation. And now here we are making... Uh, 38 heat shielding per second. Nice. Alright, so we got all four resources again, 35k steel, fantastic. I think I will, okay, where, since we're not going to have this in the usual spot, is it okay to just put it here? Probably. 
So that goes there. And that goes there. And we can very easily get a rough idea of how much we've got. More than a train load of each resource. So once we place this belt down here... We should see this whole thing going at full speed. It might take a little while to train out though first. Why do the inserters just double load one resource at a time? Okay, so we've got more than enough throughput from the inserters themselves. Once you see those numbers stop moving, you know it's fully loaded. I'm interested to see how it works out, considering that we've got an exact ratio here that it should consume exactly the resources that can get through these belts. Oh, I forgot, this is also going to be a stress test to see if this layout with this circuit actually can fully saturate these belts at full speed. I think they can. It seems like they can. Is it going at full speed yet? It's kind of hard to tell. It looks to me like it's going almost full speed so far. But it shouldn't take too long until... Okay, never mind. Oh, that would probably help. That would probably help. Okay. So pretty soon we actually will see this belt going at full speed. Yeah, depending on the frequency it's kind of hard to see, but I thought it was stopping and starting. Why is there so little copper? Oh. Did I turn this off? I did. Here you can see exactly what happens with the average based stack size if we don't have an offset like this. Now they can go full speed unless they are getting significantly ahead of the average. And then you can see the stack size getting smaller and smaller. Cool. Should just double check all those other constant combinators are actually working. Yep. If you turn them off it says disabled. Alright. We're still not going at full speed here. Why did... Why is there a gap? We ran out of plastic already. I should have waited for it to accumulate for longer if we wanted to watch this whole thing go full speed for more than a minute. It's fine. That just tells us that... Ugh, this again... This train is trying to leave. I genuinely don't know how these trains are picking up sulfur on their way to get plastic. How much plastic do we have here? 55,000. Okay. Let's watch the next train that's scheduled to come here. It's this one, and it's empty. And here it comes.
It looks pretty normal. What about this one? You're unloading. You are over here. Shouldn't there be another one if there's a train scheduled to come over here? Oh, oh, was that? No. I think maybe when that train goes back to depot. Yeah, this one's going back to depot. Um, I think maybe that's when that light stops being yellow. Might be a bit difficult to catch trains in the act, picking up that sulfur. I'm not sure why they're doing it. Ever thought of that? Uh, wait, what? What did we never think of? This one... Why is that light still yellow, then? Evenly output of inserters. Yeah, it's, uh... I think it's pretty necessary when you're dealing with trains. Because... Unless you're going to make sure that you... Well, actually, even even if you, like, only allow yourself to put in a train load or two to these chests... Um, if you don't evenly output from the chests, wouldn't you eventually get, like, an imbalance? Where you have the train sitting there with... One or two cargo wagons not emptying. All right, here we go. It's coming through the sulfur area. Oh, it's picking up sulfur. Derp. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's not an explanation. It happened. How did it happen, though? How? No. How did this happen? You sneaky train. I've been waiting here just to catch you in the act. And you... Does anyone have any idea how this is happening? And is it only happening at this station, as opposed to this one? I don't think that should be the case. Okay, off you go. Yeah, I don't... I don't have a clue, frankly. I don't think trains are, like, approaching from this direction to get to this station, because even with double-header trains, um, trains will always approach stations based on the direction of the train stop. So the signaling would allow them to come in here to go to here, Except the the way the train pathing is, it would never do that. And it would also have to stop where the sulfur is. And if that happened, I would expect to see a lot more sulfur than like 35 in most of the cargo wagons. So I don't have any clue how that's happening either. Hmm. 
Why is this train not leaving? It is full. It's trying to go over here. I failed to see the problem. This is a regular signal. The train should be able to stop up here. If that's its path, it should absolutely be going now. Those are separate sectors. That shouldn't have affected anything. Why, why is this train... Is it... Is it shy? Oh. It wouldn't be because of this broken signal. We've had... Um... We've had a bunch of trains come and go from here. I don't think that was the issue. We could definitely stand to change a few of these, though. Like so. I... What are you doing? Oh, you've only got a little bit of stone brick. Wait, why do you only have a little bit of stone brick? Oh no. Seriously? No? That's... that should be fine. I thought it was trying to go to a different station, but that's not the case. What? What is happening? Why are you picking up 1.5k stone brick? And why... Where do you think you're going with that? Okay, you're trying to go to this stone brick drop-off? Even though... Oh. Uh-oh. Um... That's a problem. Yeah, that might be a problem. Uh, stack request threshold 160. Stack re request threshold one uh, 160. Was this where we had that one problem? It was. I bet that had something to do with it. In fact, I'm sure that had something to do with it. probably sent a much smaller train than usual. So there might not be any reason that we would have had to change these requests. It still doesn't explain why we've got these trains that are full of plastic. It, it is on automatic. It's not out of fuel. It's trying to go... Is that what I... Th oh. Is this what I think it is? Oh. I forgot a signal. This entire area to the left of this bit of track counts at... This bit of track right here, and here, and all the way over here counts as one... Um, sector. And that is exactly the problem. So that's one mystery solved. Um, I think we'll just send this train home. I'm not sure why this one wasn't moving, but 
we don't want it delivering like a tiny delivery anyway. Oh. And I missed my chance again to see why we're getting a small amount of sulfur in each of these trains. It's always the trains that come for plastic. Um, if we were seeing other trains have a small amount of sulfur, like what's remaining in these stack inserters that are sticking out, for example, um, then I would expect that maybe there's like a something weird where all of the trains are going where it's doing this, but like It's always sulfur. Well, there's your problem. A podcast with slides. Oh, hey, oh, sorry. I think I said earlier, but welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Just the mystery of the magical sulfur, Lamau. Yes, indeed. Stops by a signal close to the sulfur pickup. Pick a bit on, and then the signal goes to green. Yeah, that was my first thought, but um, for one thing, because of the direction of the train stop, the trains would never come in this way to get to here. And the other thing is, if that's what ha if that's what's happening, I would probably expect to see way, way, way more sulfur in the train rather than just a little bit. This one's going home. So we're going to camp here until we see a train coming for sulfur again. It's going to be after that yellow light goes off, I think. Nope. This one's on the way. Okay, we can verify that the train is in fact empty. Oh. It is going in that way. How is it? I've never seen them do that. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Could you disconnect the track between the plastic and sulfur stops? Yes. Or I could just change the signaling so that they're not allowed to go through in that direction. What I'm really curious about is if that's the problem, why have I not seen this problem happen before? Because we've got a bunch of train stops that look exactly like that. Because I wanted the trains, theoretically, to be able to leave by going through the other station, if that just happened to be quicker. Um, except I've never actually seen them leave in that direction, so we probably wouldn't be losing anything if I changed those signals so they don't do that. Where are you going? What? Oh. I understand now. It's supposed to be picking up from here. And it's picking up from here. Because LTN creates a temporary train stop. At the location that the train is supposed to go to. But. It's, when I try to create a temporary train stop here, it's facing the wrong way. And I don't know if there's a way to reverse that. I've never seen it do, do it like this before. Yeah, this is what we want, but up here. But we can't, we can't get that one to line up. Even though the signaling is the same. So LTN creates a temporary train stop at the exact location at, of the station which in this case is here, it stops for literally like one tick or something. A few of these inserters that are, just happen to be sticking out put some sulfur in, and this is why it's always just three cargo wagons. Um, I wonder why I can't Wait, don't tell me. Wait, is there, a, is there a signal missing over here? There isn't. Oh, did I... 
Is this it? I bet this is it. Trains are now allowed to go... Oh, I also forgot... Yeah, 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 I think I've got it. Um, because of the weird different thing that we had to do with the positioning of uh, these train tracks for this particular output, or rather, it, maybe it wasn't necessary, but we ended up with it anyway. Um, the, the trains, basically this and this, the vertical, the north-south parts, to the left and right, or east and west, if you like, of the coal liquefaction modules, um, the train has to be able to go the wrong way, quote-unquote, down these uh, rails in order to enter this thing. We, we need right-hand drive here so that the train can come down this way. And this entire area is going to have to be like a intersection. So now, if I pick a train and hold control here, it should be able to approach from the correct direction. There we go. And I forgot to... I forgot to signal this part. Because this is quite unusual compared to what we've done in other places. Um, that we have to have the trains allowed to go either direction on... Uh, on some of these vertical... If they're next to each other, both of those north-south rails, the trains have to be either be able to go in either direction. Um, it has to be able to come down left side to go here, right side to go here. I guess north-south doesn't... Uh, heading north, it doesn't really matter. So we don't actually have a signal here to allow that. Which maybe we should because I think a train picking up sulfur has to has to leave going this way. They can go this way, they can't go that way, yeah. Well So that answers the mystery of the weird little bits of sulfur. Fantastic. And it looks like we're already full on low-density structures. No, we're not. Why have we stopped? Is it steel? Okay, fair enough. So there was one problem causing it to not be able to go the right way, forcing it to route backward and pick up extra sulfur, and another problem making it so that it couldn't leave the station. Yeah, it could lead... Uh, the sulfur train, for example, could leave the station. It just can't leave in the direction that is probably more efficient. Um, if we do this... And this... And... This... Uh, a train picking up sulfur from here would now be able to leave this way. And I think we probably did do that over here, yes. No. There's a signal missing for that one. Um, but yeah, because of what LTN does, um, it creates a temporary stop at the destination, and then the next stop is the actual station. These are these two here are at exactly the same spot. Uh, what that does is resolves any ambiguity of which station the train is actually supposed to go to if the stations multiple stations with the same name. Um, but in this instance, because of the bad signaling, 
it worked against us because this station is unreachable, but this one is reachable. And this point right here is reachable as a temporary stop, but only by going the wrong direction. So the train was scheduled to come here as a temporary stop. It came here from the right, stopped for just a moment, received sulfuric, uh, received sulfur, and then wound around and came back to this other plastic pickup instead. Kind of an interesting chain of events, really. Okay. Uh, so why are we missing steel, apart from steel takes a long time to smelt? This one is not doing anything. There's no iron plate. There's no iron. There's copper and stone and sand. We're f pretty full on glass. Oh yeah, I forgot. The way I set this up earlier was we don't try to smelt anything until it drops below 16,000. Which is one train load. So that actually makes sense, but... Since the only thing that we want to smelt is iron plate or steel... Um, and we don't have iron ore here. It's not smelting anything. Alright, seems like we need more iron ore. I mean, we've got a pretty good rate. Oh, this is actually switched off. Oh, so we are now getting some spikes up. I completely forgot about the coronal mass ejection. I guess it passed without incidents. Uh, I would have liked to have kept an eye on our umbrella and see how our power looked. Maybe we can find it. How long ago was it? We don't have a timestamp. I think it was like two hours or so. I know. We can search for Umbrella. There it is. Uh, about one and a quarter hours ago. Hey, had that set? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Thanks for the raid. Schnipper, good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. How was your stream? I dropped by just briefly earlier on. Welcome, buddy. No worries. So... It's really hard to tell, but I, I wish we could sort of zoom in on this or something, but it seems like the coronal mass ejection passed without incident. Noticed you dropping by? Yes, indeed. I noticed your uh, your Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 game was at like, I want to say 20 UPS. It's, it looked very late game from what I could tell. Oh, I think I figured out why the, um, we might have to fix something here, preventatively. I think I figured out why that train picking up the stone brick wasn't going anywhere. And I might just find evidence for it. Um, is this it? No? Is it this one? Mm, nope. Is it this one? No. I don't think I will find evidence for it, actually. Um, yeah, we've got a precise loader, but it's works. It's missing a couple of combinators, and it works under the assumption that 
um, that we're going to be loading a multiple of four items. And then we just make sure we only allow a full train to come here. Provide stack threshold 160. But I think despite the provide stack threshold, the fact that we had a station somewhere that is allowed to uh, receive less than a full train load, um, that one over here somewhere, where we had to add the stack request stack threshold again, uh, I think because LTN scheduled a smaller drop, we ended up with a train that was asking for just a little bit more stone brick, and none of the inserters were swinging. UPS and FPS aren't doing well. RIP. I made screens of my train world for hat, and had 30-ish UPS running around there. RIP. Want to buy a NASA computer to run Factorio. Yeah. Uh, something I'm currently procrastinating is, I've heard having a dedicated machine for streaming, it doesn't need to be very powerful at all. Um, maybe if I set up my old computer to do that. Because if I'm not streaming Factorio, this same save never dips below like 59, 60 UPS might be worth a try. On the other hand, I think I've just got one uh, Ethernet port that I can plug into. That might be a problem. Planning on something like that as well? Yeah. Okay, so uh, this, by the way... Oh, I should turn off my robo port. This is our item destroyer because most of our resources at this point are coming from core mining and because we make more copper than we need relative to iron for example um, we literally have to destroy it or just keep making storage space f literally forever otherwise the production will stop so every 30 seconds we fire a volley of whichever resources we're trying to get rid of here. Um, we did kind of accidentally end up with a bunch of iron here. Uh, that was a mistake. But it would be too much trouble to... It would kind of be a lot of trouble to move it, maybe. Let's um, actually have an idea about how we could do that. Let's take... Oh, you're already trying to go somewhere. So are you. And so are you. What are the odds of that? Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Um, it seems all of our trains are in motion. What is happening here? Why? Uh-oh. That, that's not a good sign. Send me your overflow copper. I would love to. Imagine you could sync different playthroughs. I think there was a mod for that a while ago or something like that. What is going on here? Oh, the chest is full. Oh, no. I think I went a little bit overboard with the requests. Um. Whoops. How about we just send this train home? Trash train will pick up the stuff that it's carrying. And now comes another one. It looks like it's empty though. Oh, it this is the trash train. Conveniently enough. By all means, take my trash. Why are you putting... Oh, I see. That request to chest didn't actually have... Actually, no, I'm confused, because trash slots do count as being in the logistic network. So what we're doing here is reading the logistic network contents, 
Uh, and then we've got a big negative number for any item that we want to keep. And then we're setting requests at a requester chest. I don't know why the sulfur had to go back and forth and go into storage just now. That's kind of weird. Anyway. Oh, we've got how many trains queuing up to come here? Uh, max trains is one. Oh, there's no train limit here. There might be another trash train coming. That is the trash train. Uh, go home, please. There's only two of them, and they managed to stop the entire train network. And this one is delivering ammo. You're picking up iron, probably. Yes, good. Okay. Fantastic. I can't remember what I was focusing on before all of this. There was something over this general direction that I wanted to fix or figure out, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Maybe I could try to figure it out while the bots... Oh, that's right. I don't, this isn't what I was trying to remember, but we definitely need to make an oil uh, rail block that isn't um, coal liquefaction. So... I guess here is fine. We'll need some landfill. I'd rather not be trying to design and then bumping into the water. All of this stuff, though, should remain untouched. As in, that's just the arbitrary limit of where I build things with the city block system. To try to keep it neat. I'm rather pleased with this uh, spaghetti input. Really, really didn't expect to be able to get this much throughput in this tight of a space. And we're complete. We're pretty much full on everything except for steel. So that's the only thing. Limiting our production of LDS for now. 23.7 per second. We're currently at five, 6,000. Nice. How much can we fit? I think it's uh, 57,000. It's a stack of 50, right? Yeah. So 50 times 48 times 24... 57,600. Uh, so we're like more than 10% of the way to completely filling these chests. Uh, why don't we go build that oil system? So we're going to need some chemical plants. Probably quite a lot. Refineries. And a, about a million storage tanks. Same goes for underground pipe. This is actually probably not enough. I'm sure we'll have to make at least another trip regardless of what inputs I put here. Did the bots already bring that stuff? No, I forgot to turn on my personal logistics. 
That would explain it. Uh, speaking of not having torn down the old wall yet, I haven't torn down the old wall yet. Also, there is a train stuck here until the end of time for some reason. Uh, the only thing that it's... Oh, okay. Well, most of these things it hasn't managed to unload. Because our purple chest is full? Wait, do we have no logistic bots here? Zero out of 811. What on earth are 811 logistic bots doing over here right now? I don't... That zero would imply they are all in flight, right? Zero available, 811 total. But I don't see them anywhere. I don't... Uh-oh. Um... Is it possible that all of the storage chests are full? What? There is 1.2 thousand... <laughs> There's 1.2 thousand construction bots in this storage chest. Um... What... What is happening? They're at the bottom, stuck with no free storage space. Oh! Is that them? No. Yes. There they are. Okay, so something went wrong. Um... We're supposed to get... Is, is this it? Did I just... Did I just forget to... Connect a RoboPort to this? So that we could read the logistic storage network? So the whole time... LTN thought, understandably, that... There were no resources accumulated at this location. Let's see. We're currently requesting everything. If I connect this wire right here, we're only requesting ammo. There's your problem. Um, lazy bots capper. Uh, okay. I'm going to drop off all of this stuff that we picked up to make the oil area. And I'm just going to put it in a chest over here. Or two, if I have to. Um, that's probably fine. And this is actually kind of a good opportunity to implement something I thought about doing and decided not to bother with. So currently what we do, I think I explained this a minute ago, but what, where is this connected to? What? Each greater than zero output, each one times negative 10K. This is different from the other setup that we just looked at. Well, regardless, uh, what I want to set up here now is instead of having like a blacklist of things that we do not put in the trash, um, I actually just want to set some arbitrary limits of each resource in the logistic network and we'll bring the rest back here. This is actually reading bot statistics. This green wire is logistic network contents. This is each greater than zero. I'll put one. Oh, okay. So this is a negative 10,000 for each item that we want to keep. 
and everything else gets set requests brought back here. Um, I think if I just change this to like negative 200 or something, that might be all it takes. Um, except how we never actually did the part where we never actually did the part where this chest receives positive signals either. Um, I might want a red wire for this part. Does it matter? Yeah, it does, because it'll mess with that signal over there. Okay. So... Red wire over here. And we're going to receive positive signals for everything in the logistic network. Uh, we're going to receive minus 200 for every item that we want to keep. Maybe we could make that a thousand. I don't think it's going to be a bad thing if we've... We've already got so much stuff here. Why don't we keep a thousand of everything? And then once there's items in this chest, uh, the trash train will be allowed to come and get it. A Zavuxful. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Seems like you might have slightly oversupplied your defenses. Yeah. This probably didn't help with um, getting LTN to bring specific items that we need to build the wall. Like, in a timely fashion. Well, I'm glad we got the bots in motion again anyway, without... Uh, without having to, like, move some of them or something. Um, since we've got so many construction bots in... Doop -a -doop. Since we've got so many construction bots sitting in storage, we should probably have a requester for them here as well. Or we could just do it like this, this time. My only concern with this is, do I not want to design it so that this could work for any um, wall drop-off? If we're allowed to have a thousand extra construction bots. Um, then we need a mechanism to send them back into the logistic network. I think... Do they get counted if they're in a requester chest? I'll use a buffer chest. Alright, that should do it. Doing good as always, you? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, we made some ultimate spaghetti today. Uh, this is very unexpectedly possible. Getting... Four full belts of input. For glass, copper, and... Um, plastic and two full belts of steel so that we can make 23.76 uh, low density structures per second factorio spaghetti yeah except it's not it's not the traditional kind of spaghetti where you you know you don't plan things out very well and you end up having to do some spaghetti this was I bet we can't fit all of this input in this general area. And I was right, because look look down here. 
Um, but we did actually manage to get four full blue belts of each resource, except two blue belts of steel to come together um, for full throughput down to these machines over here. Although I think I just caught a glimpse over this way that, as I kind of suspected, as good as it is, we're not going to get full, uh, four full blue belts out of uh, this circuit right here. Not that it's not enough stack inserters or not enough belt, um, but just the pattern of the inserters dropping things onto these belts, um, you tend to get gaps. And we made a circuit to kind of try to mitigate that, but I don't think it's going to work perfectly. Maybe we'll see in a moment. I'm seeing some really small gaps on the right over here. It's pretty close. It is very nearly four full blue, uh, 90 items, sorry, 180 items per second. Yeah, that is a little disappointing though, considering that this is literally exactly 180 items per second. But that's only if everything else is always supplied as well. You can very easily saturate to... There's gaps in this one as well. What the hell? Okay, maybe there's... Maybe I should change something in this circuit. Um, something that we were doing before is the inserters in the middle of each group are uh, exempt from having their stack size set because they're the ones that get blocked by the other stack inserters. Now everything's stopped anyway. We've actually got 23,000 LDS already. That is half of the chests. Well, a little bit less. If we can crack four full blue belts in this space... I will be very pleased. But first we need to see all of these machines active at the same time. It's looking pretty good, but... Oh, there's a gap. And what just happened to our power? Something big. Accumulators. Oh, laser turrets just spiked like crazy. Wow. But, oh, uh, what is happening with our accumulator charge? Um. He hello? What? Is, oh, don't tell me nuclear stopped. Yep. Um, I kind of forgot to double check. Oh, that's cool. We're trying to deliver nuclear fuel over here, but it's blocked because the chest is too full. Over here, we just straight up don't have any fuel. All right, let's go look at that, shall we? It seems like this system is sorting itself out. 
Let's get some more. Oh, we're actually already on full jetpacks. So, uh, remember all those logistic requests I made? Um, we've probably got enough to make the entire oil area this time, uh, next time. Except there weren't any refineries this time. Okay. First things first. Uh, where is our uranium? Give to me the nuclear fuel, please. And that was a shorter trip than I expected. Um, take the nuclear fuel, please. And I think there's already a bunch of nuclear fuel over here, but it's in the train. Maybe I should have a dedicated uh, chest just for fuel. It's only 50, but it'll do the job. Uh, let me go and pick up some more, actually. I thought there would be more than that. Forgot we're only requesting 50 fuel there. Alright, give to me the rest of the nuclear fuel, please. And then... Deliver. Taking... Oh, I never put these back. Whoops. Has this nuclear plant never been active? No, it's definitely been a little bit active, but I don't think it ever reached full productivity. Because we're at like 300 degrees Celsius here. If it had been used and stopped, it would be just under 500 degrees on the pipes. All right. Well, that'll help. In fact, our accumulators are already full. Um, I really need to... That's a lot of stuff. I should probably do the same thing here as I was talking about at the other location. So maybe we'll just keep one stack of everything here, at the most. Uh, what does this stack to? Is it a hundred? I think this is only ten, but I don't know how many of these I want to keep. Um, Well, how many of these go into a nuclear plant? 192. Stacks to... Uh, steam turbine... What? Oh, it stacks to 10. Okay. That's not a lot. Considering we need, like, one and a half times as many. Well, no, almost two. I just want to make sure this chest doesn't end up full again. That's all. Uh, landfill. Limit it to one stack. Let's make this, uh... Hmm. 
make it a hundred and we'll see how much space is left. And I do want a lot of nuclear fuel. Let's say 500. Okay, so that should make sure there's enough room for fuel. Pretty easily, actually. But why are we still not in... Oh. Okay, never mind. I was going to say why are we still not getting uh, nuclear fuel delivered over here, but clearly that just happened. Wait. No, it's trying to pick up nuclear fuel. How dare you. Okay. I obviously need to change something over at that location. Um, but first thing I do there is going to be to change this one. Um, I guess I delivered a lot more nuclear fuel than I realized, because now we're going to take some back to base. It's probably fine. So here we have a list of requests for LTM. Why don't we make this 10? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Two, th I don't think I have to put these on a different request combinator. Though I do understand putting the train stuff on a different combinator. All right, let's um, let's put this over here. Get rid of these two repair packs and uranium. Repair packs. Oh, it's under this, isn't it? Yep. And uranium. Or rather, uranium fuel cell. Let's make it 500. I don't want to run out again. Okay. So the negatives are what we are requesting from LTN. I don't like the way this is all off to the side. Request threshold is... 1... Um, I want a train to come no matter how few items are missing. Although, after changing some of those requests, maybe I could change that a bit. Just ask for a stack of everything. And then we could set a request threshold of, like, well, not 10, because that would mean we have almost no robo-pots. Make it 5. I'm sure by the time something reaches 5, we'll be bringing multiple types of items. Unless it's a total of 5 different items. Okay. Over here we've got... I never actually ended up using that combinator or a condition on this chest, uh, inserter. Um, we're reading the logistic network contents. Hmm. Okay, here comes the fuel. Do you use blueprint snapping? 
absolutely when I can uh, snap to grid relative is a great tool in fact quite often I would recommend like say you're building a line of green circuits and you don't have a blueprint you do the usual uh, green circuits copper wire inserters and so on maybe you have iron here and green circuits go out there uh it's really quick to just go snap to grid relative and brr. really really quick and easy uh, but for more complicated things uh obviously it's going to save us a lot of time instead of carefully placing this blueprint uh what, a hundred times or something? We can literally just line it up, hold shift, click, and drag it all the way down. Although, when I'm dragging it into certain places, like the Fog of War, I do sometimes get some weird behavior where, like, certain buildings aren't marked to be constructed. Uh, but yeah, other than that, really great tool. And good day, and to you as well, Emo. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so this is a passive provider, and this is a storage chest. Um, we've got the conditional putting in of logistic bots and construction bots. We are reading... We're reading how many bots are in the cons uh, in the bot network as available bots as a positive number that we report to LTN. That seems fine to me. Um, except I wonder if we're going to end up with a loop of like getting rid of bots. Um, We're only putting in bots when there's no available bots. So we have some in the logistic network. I think... Oh, we're not actually reporting the logistic network contents to LTN. We need to do that with this setup. So this red wire over here should do the trick. So now it's going to get a positive signal of how many bots are in chests, for example. And also how many are available. So if we end up with like... Uh, 10 bots available. 40 in the chest. And our limit is 50. Well, no, this is only going to look at LTN, uh, the logistic network, not LTN. So we're going to get rid of bots if there's more than 50 in the chests, not in the robo network. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, cool. Just to confirm, we're not directly reporting what's in this passive provider chest to LTN. Oh, cheers for explaining. No worries. Oh, Baker Staunch. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. Uh, so that one should be working properly now. There's a lot of stuff that needs to go in the trash train, it seems like. Uh, maybe we should make this a stack inserter. Even if in the long run it's not going to... Oh! And thank you very much for the five gifted tier one subs. Uh, enjoy it, Morpheus, uh, Terex, Sway, 
Sepulsnia and uh, Shorty. Hope you'll enjoy it. Much appreciated, Banker. Uh, banker? Baker. I mispronounced. I would never accuse anyone of such a thing. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, I need to check on this train station down here before we go and build that. And Krezis, thank you for the su uh, Prime sub. Two months as well. Cheers. Much appreciated. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Very humbling and very much appreciated when you put something in the tip jar. Uh, we already patched this part. We put that wire over there. We don't need this. This doesn't have to be a filter in Yeah, no, that's fine. And we need to copy these settings. I got distracted from Factorio and started a satisfactory run. Hope you're enjoying it. Have you played it before? Hey, we finished our bioscience research. That is another long chain of unfamiliar production that we'll have to dive into. I think... I said this before, but I think we are very much running out of things that we can still research. Oh, we actually did finish lasers. I think... There we are. I don't know why it doesn't sort by, like, the type of research, uh, type of research packs that you need. Bonk. About five years ago, so I'm playing Update 5 on Experimental. Nice. Wait, it's still Experimental? Do you think I should, uh... Do you think I should use Update 5 tomorrow, or just stick with what I've got for now? Follow a robot count, artillery shell shooting speed. Oh, we can do another range. It's quite expensive. Why not? This is what I actually want. Out of all the things that we can still research. Don't care about artillery shooting speed. And let's do physical damage, and why not queue up physical da uh, speed? Is that the bunk sound from the guy that hits that girl in the US? Not to my knowledge. Uh, it's the bunk sound from the, like, horny police doge meme. I heard the base game will be updated to five, a few days to a week anyway. Cool. I'm not far into that game, I'm just setting up coal, so... Am I actually going to see anything update five specific uh, in like the next few game hours, or no? Stop being horny? Okay. Um, let's turn this on, and I think our next task is oil, not coal liquefaction, just regular oil. I wonder if we're going to have any trouble bidding. Oh, they gave me even more storage tanks, I forgot about that. Oh well. That'll help, maybe. Regnar, thank you very much for the bits. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And... Roboport's on. I should really make a template 
for just the basics, like the where the um, where the LTN stops go and stuff like that. I keep finding I have to measure them out. Twenty-four DKK for sup. DKK for sup. Um. I don't know what that means. Okay. Danish Kronis. Okay. I... After all that, I didn't bring enough rail. Just for that little bit. That's upsetting. I don't suppose I can handcraft some. Nope, I don't have stuff. I do have stone. I can make a hundred rail. I cannot make another hundred rail. This is fine, probably. Okay. Um, now I've got way too many items. My, I might actually end up with full trash slots here. Okay. Uh, we need some... We need some stations. We need to not request any. Wait, what? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Anyway, I'm just going to get rid of this circuitry for now. Um, we're not going to do physical stations, actually. These are going to be fluids. So get rid of all of that. I'll keep the radar in the same place, maybe, we'll see. Um, we're only going to be dropping off... Well, we're obviously going to get water from nearby this time, but I would like to design a system where we get water from elsewhere, just in case. Yon Jesus, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated, thank you. Uh, so, probably, maybe, do the storage up here. And there's going to be, I think there's going to be a super abundance of room to do oil things in this square area. Uh, we don't need those underground belts. Oh, I... Yes, indeed. Uh, Gwil QP. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I might actually do some physical drop-offs here as well. Because we're going to need coal to do... S not sulfur. Um, we're going to need coal to do plastic. And I think I would like to... I think I would like to do plastic and sulfuric acid in this space, just like we did with coal liquefaction. And uh, explosives as well. So we can do all the direct oil products here. So this could be coal and iron drop-off, just like we did with um, coal liquefaction. In fact, maybe I'll just copy, copy this to start with. It depends on... It depends on where we end up putting the uh, refineries. Start with this as a foundation. So the first step is going to be regular old advanced oil or in the case of space exploration uh, advanced oil processing oh this is actually this kind of confirms it um, this is a vanilla 
blueprint. And it gives us the advanced oil processing recipe that gives us more light oil. Um, if I recall correctly, this is actually exactly the same with the uh, ratios and output and stuff. Okay. So... I want to fit as many of these as I can, but also, probably shouldn't have placed that yet. But also I want to make sure there's room for, I think probably one blue belt is going to be enough. Well, it's definitely going to be way more than enough for iron. Um, as for coal... Uh, I'm pretty sure a full blue belt of coal is going to be way more than enough as well. We're probably just going to follow... We're mostly probably just going to follow the exact same design as coal liquefaction, except we don't need this uh, boilers and stuff up the top. And I don't know what we're going to use all this extra space that we're going to have for... Also, if I can... Well, okay, there's a use for some of the extra space. Um, I think I would like to have just a regular kind of... Uh, pickup stations down the bottom here. So that we don't have to have the weird signaling. Update 5 contains signs, customizer, cosmetic buildables. Cosmetic buildables, what does that mean? I know you can already paint your buildings, but probably goes a few steps beyond that, right? Changes to build system, so adding zooping, soft and hard clearance, quick switching, improvements to trains and vehicles, and much more. Okay, that sounds worth running the experimental, I think. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Uh, thanks for letting me know. Need a drink of water. Much better. Alright, I just want to double check this because I wouldn't be surprised if there's some... Yep, there it is. Some very minor errors, which will drive me crazy if I'm replicating them later on. Let me just remove that underground pipe from that old blueprint. Much better. Okay. So, every other... I think when I designed this one, I found I could save a bit of space here as well. Yeah. Because we're going straight to the light oil, and we've got this one going kind of straight to petroleum. Yeah, we can definitely do better than this design, because we're not piping everything out to the side and then coming back in. We're going straight through as often as we can. So every other underground pipe, uh, every other oil refinery has petroleum go straight through with this little S-bend down to petroleum here. Uh, every single one goes straight through to light oil, which means we don't need these. And heavy obviously goes straight here. We don't really need these ones. It was kind of a... When I first designed this, um, all of these sideways underground pipes were just sort of a habit uh, left over from designing a smaller system, basically. So... That's going to save us another tile of clearance up here. 
Um, and now that I look at it, we don't need that particular piece of pipe. If I do it this way, I don't have to rotate it every time. Uh, we need beacons. Let's look at how I fit them over here. One to three. That's not getting... There's no way we're ever touching four. Even if they were all right next to each other, which would make things very awkward. So that's going to be pretty straightforward. I think we'll put it here. We could put it here. And then heavy oil could go like this. Or we could put it here, and heavy oil would have to... Well, not... Did I say heavy oil? I meant crude oil. Crude oil would have to go up here before connecting like so. Um, considering that overall this one is smaller, and it looks a bit better, I think. Uh, why don't we do it this way? Um, unless we wanted to have oil connecting up to a big storage thing that stretches out this way. Considering... Okay, let's make sure we power up the beacons first. Before we get ahead of ourselves estimating uh, how many we need. How many more can we fit? That's a pretty good fit on the left. Obviously we're going to have to move this whole thing down a little bit. I'm pretty sure. Um, so, let's give this some power. And run rate calculator over it. And I won't be too surprised to see that we are well within um, the throughput range of a single pipe. So we don't need to worry about having it go up like this every time or periodically or anything. Uh, we can literally just connect this one up here. I would like to find one of these that just coincidentally, there we go, coincidentally lines up with, uh... oh, but that's where the pump is going to be to take from the train. Whoops. All right, so that that's never going to line up. What about this one? That I can live with. And we can put another pump here, perhaps. No, not at all. Should we put a pump over here? I think we probably should. And then... We need to copy this whole mess over repeatedly. Oh, let's not forget to connect these ones, not those ones. There we go. And that should be that. Make sure it lines up properly. And then need just a little bit more. Oh no, I forgot about pipe throughput isn't 100. Uh, it's 1200 maximum for pipe. You can get insane throughput, uh, I think 12,000 per second 
um, literally, if you're doing, uh, like from storage tank to storage tank, or if you're doing from a, uh, fluid wagon to a storage tank, but once you go through a regular piece of pipe, it drops down to, um, 1200 per second. But 1200 per second is way more than 600 per second, so we're going to be fine there. And that was when I realized I was muted. When I went to cough and almost unmuted myself to treat you to that. From this setup, what do you want as output? Only gas, petrol? Um, just about everything, actually. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I'm just double checking. I think I've checked before with FNEI. Um, but even with space exploration. Oh. Okay, there's a use for heavy oil, directly. Except we're already doing that in space. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. We're not going to be... We're not going to be launching heavy oil into space. Um, we're already launching coal and ice into space in order to... turn that into all types of oil, directly. Um... We can make med packs out of it. I think there's another recipe for med pack that we're using instead. Um, whole liquefaction, barrel, cracking, solid fuel, lubricant. Yeah, okay. So we don't need heavy oil as an output. But other than that, um, I want light oil, petroleum, lubricant, uh, sulfuric acid, plastic, sulfur, and explosives. Um, I'm going to produce all of that here. And I've basically already designed this. We did this with coal liquefaction. I just need to adapt it a bit. Um, this is obvi obviously going to save a lot of train logistics to not have separate, uh, separate areas producing some of these things. And not to mention, it takes very little space to produce enough uh, sulfuric acid or lubricant, for example. So I think for the most part we're going to copy this, but we're going to adapt it to um, just regular advanced oil. Um, I forgot where else I was going with that. We need to make sure beacons can touch all of these. We've already done that. Um, I think I ended up having to... I kind of added beacons to the cracking system as an afterthought. And I ended up... What? How did I do it? Yeah, I ended up putting a single beacon 
next to each of these uh, uh, chemical plants. And the ones next to heavy oil were actually... Uh, heavy oil, the chemical plants themselves, are actually set to nothing but speed because we just ended up with way too much heavy oil if we didn't do that and the whole coal liquefaction system would stop. Um, the ratio is going to be a bit different with this one, though. Uh, 20 heavy oil to 70 light to 30 petroleum compared to... 90 heavy oil to 20 light to 10 petroleum. Yeah, this is going to be much better. I think we could... I actually completely suspect we could skip the beacons for... Maybe for cracking altogether, but definitely for the top row. The thing is, um, this was designed without beacons in mind. And I don't know how many of these we're actually going to need. On the other hand, especially where fluids are concerned, I do like to have these sort of all evenly spread out. We can... Um, we can move these power poles up here. Actually... I might just use picker dollies for that so that I don't have to redo all of the removing bits of cable. I could do this a lot faster if I had three hands. Alright, getting into a groove now that it's almost over. Alright. So we can put down... Where are my beacons? There we go. Uh, except for here. We can put down two, one beacon for every two machines. I don't know how necessary it's going to be. Um, with coal liquefaction... There was a lot of cracking that was needed, especially heavy oil to light. But with... Uh, I don't know that we'll need any beacons here, actually. Because we just don't do that much cracking. Normally. With advanced oil. Whatever the case... Why don't we continue this over here? And as far as keeping all of these machines here for cracking, we'll see. Um, I am aware of these extra bit of pipes. We'll maybe remove that later on. No, we'll definitely remove these ones where the beacons are going to be. Actually, I'm not so sure. If we end up removing the beacons, we might keep those. Uh, we may end up coming down here with water for sulfur, but I think I like this design better, actually. Although some of this is a bit fudge, a bit spaghetti. I don't know how much better I could do than that layout, though. In this instance, coal was brought down here after it's used for other things, kind of as a... You know, kind of because it was there. I'm surprised? Okay, hold on. I'm seeing this uh, switch flicker on and off quite a lot. I did put a system in to give it a bit of a latch without too many combinators. Um, I don't know if it's working or if I just didn't set the number high enough. As I've been designing coal liquefaction set up on the space platform, I've been sending up water and ice and my refinery masses 250,000 water per minute, so maybe pipes can't cope with that. 
yeah, it depends how many pipes and where they're going. Um, 250,000 per minute is... Uh, 4.1... 4.2k per second. Um, you need four pipes to make sure you don't bottleneck on the pipes for that. Assuming my math is correct. Um, okay, so... What we're doing here is each times 5k... Wait, what? Uh, I don't think... Oh, I see. Okay, never mind. Um, so the green wire is the contents of all of the fluids. The, the total of all of the fluids. If heavy oil is greater than light oil, output one heavy oil to this combinator. And same goes for if light oil is greater than petroleum, output one light oil and then multiply that by 5k. So in other words, if heavy oil is greater than light oil, output 5,000 heavy oil. This red wire then goes to the power switches, which were already reading from the green wire. So basically, if heavy oil goes above light oil, Oh, I think I figured it out. No, no, this is right. If heavy oil is greater than light oil, pretend we've got an extra 5,000 heavy oil. And then we'll do cracking until that ceases to be the case. So then we'll have 5,000 more light oil than heavy oil. And then the power switch will turn off, and then we'll act. In reality, we'll have more. We'll have five thousand more light oil than heavy oil. Um, I don't think we're cracking so quickly that that is like logically correct, but we're flickering anyway. So. So what's going on here? Oh, is it because... Is it because they're both happening at the same time? So maybe if we set... If we set this one to like... I think we might need another combinator. If we pretend we've got... Hmm. Well, if we're going to do that, I should probably just copy my old circuit for this. Uh, because it, it uses one more combinator, and it works, and I am getting confused. So here's what we used to do. Um, we read how many fluids we've got of each type. If heavy oil is greater than light oil, output signal S. Uh, signal S times 500, output heavy oil. Okay, that's one way to do it. Um, is that any different logically to what I already did? Um, if heavy oil greater than light oil, output heavy oil. Uh, heavy oil times 500, output heavy oil. And considering that that wire only goes there, it does do the exact same thing. Um, and then the only difference is... These output to the same place, which is the same green wire. If they outputted red wire to these power switches, it should have exactly the same effect. The power switch's uh, enabled condition is heavy oil greater than light, or light oil greater than heavy. So as far as I can tell, um, these are actually identical. 
functionally, except in practice, we're seeing the power switch turn on and off very quickly. So I'm not sure exactly why. Because... Like, this is connected to both of these, but then so is this one. In fact, it's connected to the green wire. And if anything, you might expect some weird feedback loop. But that's the one that actually works. Um, why don't we simulate it? We'll use a constant combinator. Okay, so don't need that for now. Constant combinator, green wire. Why do I always just have 20? Oh, that's why. There's your problem. Okay, uh, we have heavy oil, 50,000. Power. Uh, cracking from heavy to light, activate. We have 50,000 light. And it stops. Shouldn't it think that there's... Shouldn't it think that there's more? Yeah, it should think there's 50,000. 55,000. Oh, because there's more light oil than petroleum, so this is true. Okay. And then petroleum is 50k. Okay, so we're not cracking. Add a timer? Maybe. I mean, I could easily solve this by using a latch. Um, it would take uh, six combinators, though, for two latches. I want to see if we can do this in a more... I mean, we've already... We've done this before, and it's worked. Uh, it is a little bit more simple, a, a bit fewer combinators. And solving these sorts of problems this way might lead to noticing that certain solutions are available in the future. Um, so... If, if heavy oil is a little bit more than light oil, we're going to output an extra 5k. So we pretend there's 55,000 heavy oil. So we're cracking heavy oil. Okay, cool. And then... Oh, wait. I think we do need the feedback loop. I think this has to be green wire that's connected to the whole thing. I think that's the problem. So, so when I built this, uh, maybe by accident, I don't remember how deliberate this was. Yeah, it's like a weird, cool, accidental memory. So it, it is kind of a latch circuit. Huh. And now it's a shared latch. So, when this drops back down to 50,000, we're not going to have more heavy oil. Whoops. And that power switch is immediately going to turn off, right? So it's not holding on to the fake 5,000 heavy oil. Um, so, if we forget about the red wire... And use green wire instead. So this is now a loop. Uh, we've currently got an equilibrium. We get one more heavy oil. And suddenly it thinks we've got 55,000 heavy oil. We lose 4,000 heavy oil. It still thinks we've got more heavy oil than light. 
And then... Once we've got 5,000 more heavy oil... Uh, light oil than heavy in reality... Uh, now it thinks they're equal. And if this drops by one more, I think... Oh, wait, I think I may have missed something. Did it actually think it was 50k heavy oil, or did I misread something just there? Let's do that again. 50,001. Okay. Uh, 45,000. It thinks there's 45,000. Okay. 50,001. Uh, 46,000, thinks there's 51,000, 45,000, it no longer thinks, okay, cool. I'm 100% following. What's the best way to learn to use combinators? Uh, start with simpler puzzles, that uh, things that you can do with them, and build upon that, basically. It's one little thing at a time that you learn to do, and you keep adding uh, adding to it and building upon it. Um, I do have a lot to say in terms of teaching uh, combinators, uh, but if you're asking like a general question about how to learn them, look for things that you can do already with circuit network, with combinators and stuff, and just do that. And uh, the more you do it, the more you're going to notice that, oh wait, maybe if I do this, it's also going to help, obviously. The faster you want to learn it, the more dedicated you are. If you like, you know, look up how to build more complicated things. Um, but yeah, it is a process. Uh, learning to do this stuff, it, I mean, even in the, even in the last days, weeks, months, um, I've been learning quite a bit, you know, as I've noticed, wait a minute, I think I can do this now, um, my balanced loaders have evolved quite a bit lately, actually, um, it wasn't long ago that I figured out a way that I could do a balanced load for up to five different items at a time by using a filter inserter. I wish there was computer craft in Factorio. What is computer craft? It's like a good teaching tool. Computer craft mods Minecraft. All about computer programming allows you to build in-game computers and total robots. That sounds cool. Okay, so... So yeah, that's it. All I have to change... Uh, to make this work properly... Is... Get rid of this red wire. Make it green wire. And voila. And over here as well. Yeah, it never occurred to me, like, because when I, when I designed this circuit up here, um, it, it, it was a very long time ago now, and my understanding of circuits wasn't that good. It's entirely possible that that I built this memory cell without realizing I was building a memory cell. Um, because I never thought of it as a memory cell. What about, like, a codable computer? There are Lua-capable combinators in Factorio. Nice. I might have to play with those one day. That would actually be a great motivation for me to get back into a little bit of programming. You can make programs for bots to do stuff for you, like a mining bot. Nice. 
Very nice. I wonder if, uh... Could you control Vic? Could, I don't suppose you could, like, plug it into AAI or something. And maybe find a way to do those things that is a lot less EPS intensive. Watching Hacks' streams plus playing around with Extended Editor. If that is the mod's name, helped me. Hacks has some great blueprints as well. Thank you. And yeah, I'm always happy to uh, try to teach this stuff. Uh, if you have questions, go for it. Um, when I get back to you on Discord, it depends, but I'm always happy to help with that. Okay, so... Um, I think these chests are actually going to be in the way, ironically enough. Yep. Hmm, how full is it? Pretty full. That's unfortunate. I think... I think this is what I have to do now. Trash pickup. Help me trash train, you're my only hope. Unfortunately, the trash trains are vanilla, so there's no way to prioritize this. It's just, it'll just go to the closest uh, closest station, but fortunately, we've already got one on the way. Cool. Um, what are we going to need lips. I think we've got enough pipe. Considering that my uh, logistic trash slots are full of it. AAI lure controlled miners or haulers equals OP. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, if we could do a lot with that without murdering the UPS. Um, that really sounds good to me. So we could definitely reduce the number, uh, the combinator, the combinator count here by a whopping one. I'll use a red wire here just to be a bit more clear with what we're doing. Uh, and we're going to say each. It just occurred to me though, um, the circuit that we had here was pretending we had 500 extra fluid. These ones are 5,000. I don't know if that's going to be a bit excessive. Like, if we're getting full, is it actually going to cause a problem? Well, we'll find out. Each times 5,000. Output each, and then if light oil greater than petroleum, output light oil, and so on. Fantastic. Yeah, that should be fine. Does the green wire touch everywhere? E yes, it does. Got a mod name for that Lua Combinator? Yeah, I'd kind of like to know as well. Alright. We're going to move all of this stuff down a bit until we figure out exactly how much room we need up the top. Uh, filter inserters go. This is going to be iron plate. One thing I haven't uh, really figured out, or, okay, there's a couple of ways I could do it, but I don't know if I would want to do it that way. Um, 
there's there's a couple of ways that we could have a train station that's a pickup for any size train. But I don't think it's going to be worth the trouble. We can read from LTN to figure out which, uh, like, where the cargo wagons are and how long the train is. We the the trouble is we would need a central storage that only well okay it's, it's going to have to be just like this the the thing we have at our um storage system basically we don't keep much in this row of chests we keep it all here. And if a train comes and only takes from this cargo wagon, uh, only has a cargo wagon here, only takes from these chests, that's all going to get rebalanced. Um, and that takes up more space than I would like. If we had those big containers, like 6x6, six six, we could easily just use inserters to rebalance between them. That'd be dead simple. Random question. A fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do you know how to have deconstruction planner appear as a filter on splitters? In my games, I can only select upgrade planners. Not sure if game setting or mod that's causing this. Yeah, it shouldn't be difficult. Um, you literally just click filter, go to... I don't know if it's under equipment and combat. I mean, obviously equipment and combat doesn't exist in um, vanilla, but it's no different, you know, conceptually or anything. You just find deconstruction planner over here. It's literally right next to the upgrade planner, so if that's not showing up, um, I think it's some kind of bug from a mod. Yeah, so you'll just have to go with fish. I don't think you can put a non-physical object here, so you can't go with, like, red signal. I only have upgrade, no decon or blueprint. Yeah, that's weird. What mods are you running? too many. So just to be clear, you don't have any problems with using or making deconstruction planners. Correct. That is a oddly specific thing to break. Okay. I think I went a bit overboard bringing this all the way down here, but it's definitely going to be enough. Um, we could save a bit of space here because we know that... Or I could just copy-paste and do this again as if there's going to be two full blue belts of... Yeah, no. Um... Because we're never going to use that much iron, uh, the max rate of this, even with the beacon, is 8 iron plate per second. So I don't think we need to waste any space on... Why are... Okay. No blueprint slash book or decon appears in the splitter menu. I can still use decon by selecting from taskbar and clicking it on filter. So yeah, likely a mod. Oh, the fun to test switch. Yes, indeed.
so we're gonna do a balanced unload here. We only need regular inserters because we literally only ever need eight iron plate per second. I would still like to bring a full train load just to reduce uh, you know, the number of trips that it takes. We'll probably end up having these substations here reaching up to there. But for now, do it like that. I will bother with a lane balancer though, just because, well, for one thing, a corner lane balancer is quite small. And for two things, um, actually, no, this is the exact use case where you don't need a lane balancer because you've got um, the balanced unloader doing its job. So, our circuit is going to... Let's do iron plate. Actually, no. We're not going to bother with the stack size this time. So iron plate greater than or equal to average. Uh, this goes here. And then this goes here and here and here and here and here. Uh, Nef Neftis, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hi, I left my armor in a chest on planet. When I got back to the equipment, the equipment in it disappeared. Oh no. The... By a chest, you don't mean a dead body, right? Because that's the only time that... As far as I'm aware, that's the only use case where it would disappear. That's an unfortunate bug. I guess that's another incentive to um, automate production of power armor stuff. Whoops. Uh, each divided by negative, 24. Output each. So this is like the exact use case where we don't need a lane balancer because we've got balanced unloaders. Because uh, the problem with not having a lane balancer, even though we have this, is that it can impact throughput but we're literally only going to need 8 iron plate per second. So that's really not going to be a problem. Um, so I think this is going to go way down here. And we'll bring coal down this way as well. Hello train. Um, it figures the chain signal would be exactly where we want the corner. And as for coal, actually I wonder if it would be better to squeeze the coal through on this side. Might be a bit cleaner. Uh, we probably will... We probably will need decent throughput of coal. Uh, 22.05 maximum from this build. So yeah, we're not going to do the same thing as, as this one. Let's assume we're going to do a full two belt output just for the sake of it, even though we're going to need less than one belt. If we're going to want any kind of decent throughput, we should probably uh, do a lane balancer, which unless we do a very specific little bit of circuit wire, um, and even that needs a splitter, so we may as well do two to two. Let me just copy this stuff. I think we made it genetic. Oh, those are yellow inserters. 
Uh, why don't we do it like this? Um, I'll just copy paste from here, flip it around, and upgrade them. And we did make that totally generic. Don't need any fancy stack size stuff because this is going to be more than enough. Ground belts. Um, that one goes here, and then here. That kind of looks weird. Look this way. And this one, like so. Uh, Hooded, 1337, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. How did we get a beacon on this belt? I genuinely have no idea. And there's just one of them. That's kind of weird. Alright, let's do a balancer here. We'll probably do a long one to the left since we've got room for that. Do it like so. And like so. So these two... These two merge into this, which goes over here and merges here. These two merge into this. Same thing. Cool. Output priority right for the balancing. And... If we're going to put coal down this way, then it's going to look something like this. That seems fine. Okay. I'm pretty sure we're not going to need any more... Um, space up here. I'll just remove that for now. So I think we'll get rid of this belt. Uh, get rid of some of this belt. And we'll do a cut and paste and put this up as far as we can. That's a pretty decent fit. Yeah, it's not going to get better than that, right? Um... Let's make sure we don't run out of energy. Uh, but we've already run out of storage space. Ouch. Oh, I forgot to actually set a condition on this because... I, sh I should have anticipated that I would completely forget about this station here. So we've, while we haven't been looking, the trash train has been doing laps, coming to the station over and over. It's probably, there's probably one on the way right now. Yep. It'll sort itself out. Don't really need a medium pole over here. That looks a little bit neater. Um, we do need medium poles over here, however. And we need to be very careful about 
what they're connected to. Oops. Uh, not this one, please. So that is connected to that, and that is connected to that, and that is connected to that. And it looks good on the map. Well, substation obviously doesn't reach all the way down here. Okay, I think it's time to pick up bots just to speed this up. It also keeps them from taking my energy. I still have enough chemical plants on me? No, nope, I need to go pick them up, I think. Possibly. Well, I'll definitely have to pick them up when we start building the rest of this. But let's go. It feels weird only being able to fit three productivity modules in these things. Especially after being able to fit five in the industrial furnaces. Oh, um, I wonder if we should probably also produce rocket fuel here if we can. Um, so this might actually become a bit of a challenge to fit everything that we want instead of being dead easy. Uh-oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um... Another random chest go. I need more beacons as well. Well, that'll only be one trip when the time comes. Uh, I don't suppose if we move all of these up a bit. Oh, that's not going to touch these combinators anymore. Alright, fair enough. Let's just add some substations up here. We could probably do something a bit cleaner than that, but we'll worry about that later. Uh, this is going to be coal. And... I'm pretty sure we're not going to change the stations here, so why don't we set up the pickup? Um, I wonder if I should revisit how we do this. We'll do it from scratch. So, we definitely want a display. Uh, this is going to be anything greater than zero. Use colors. Copy all that. And this is going to be one, two, three, and so on. We can fit seven train loads here, but you pretty much never see the final light go on. Uh, each divided by 16k. Output. Uh, blue. And then... We do want a dynamic priority system. 
Uh, 7 minus... Oops. 7 minus blue output request priority. So just to confirm if we oops and this one goes down here. Actually would this be more inconspicuous? Probably. Okay, so if we have iron plate fifteen thousand Nothing. 16,000. Nothing. One blue. Use colors, anything... Oh. That should have been greater than zero. Or greater than or equal to one. There we go. And that is... Request priority 6, request priority 7 if we're empty, um, let's just add more train loads like this, it'll be more visually obvious. Request priority 5, let's add another 32k actually, so that's 4 train loads, request priority 3, alright cool. Um, I think we'll move all of that up a little bit, and constant combinator, turn it off until we're ready, uh, train length is 6, one train at a time please. Um, request priority, uh, request stack threshold rather, 160, and let's copy that for over here, because it's going to be the same, and then iron plate, let's leave a little bit of a gap. Like a thousand. LTN? LTN. In Osrage, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Now, either LTN isn't working yet, probably because I didn't flick this yet. I'm pretty sure we've got Iron Plate. It should schedule it in a few seconds. Yep, there it goes. All right. So we're going to do the same thing over here, except we're not going to do the blue light. Black signal isn't actually going to change the light color. Oh, um, minor detail. It doesn't matter yet, but everything seems to be working, but I actually forgot Oh, you're doing a pickup because I gave you a positive number. Whoops. And, oh, oh no. Okay. All right. My apologies. Move along. Go about your business. Oh, and here comes another one. Oh, no. No. Okay. There we go. Um, I'm just gonna... Okay. Uh, this should be a negative, but also, I'm going to turn this off for now. Uh, this should be a negative number. And negative 56k. Uh, the thing is, we need to compare it with the positive amount that we've got over here. I think if I... Hold on. If I connect this here, is that actually a problem? 
It is, because this thing will get the wrong idea with the averaging system. If I instead use a red wire for this part, and connect green wire directly to the train stop. I don't like the red wire being so visible here, but other than that, I also don't like the way this green wire is there. Is it really worth this to save a combinator? Yeah, probably. All right then. So over here we use a red wire. Remove the green wire. And this green wire over here. Bonk. Yay. All right, so that lowers our combinator count by one. And now, assuming that we've got iron plate somewhere, which we do, uh, we should see... It's only 12k here. 5k. Seems like we're really struggling on iron still. 5.6k... We're not still destroying iron, right? Okay, good. So that part's working. I think I never got around to rescuing those few train loads of iron. Whoops. It's fine. We're doing infinite mining. Okay. So that is our... There's no way I could position this slightly differently. No, okay. That is our coal and iron coming in. It's up if we change our mind and want the coal going over here, it's obviously not going to be difficult. Um, I think we'll copy paste a bit from. From this one. Let's see if we can't do better. Let's see. Petroleum. Uh, we won't necessarily be using this pipe, so we'll remove that for now. And I don't know what's going on with this repeating pattern. Are we going to use... Yeah, probably. Well, no. Let's assume for the moment that... We're just going to make something totally new here. So we'll remove all these extra pieces of pipe. Then we can finally pick this up. Let's get. I th think. I actually don't want to trash anything else. I do want to remember to change my requests though for when we get back. Did we drop everything? Yep. There's also some refineries and stuff over here. Actually, zero to infinity makes a lot more sense for those at the moment. Okay. So let's suppose we go with this design so far. Um, this is just fluids, so who knows where coal is going to go. Um... 
We've got 14 machines, 7 doing the left side of the belt, 7 doing the right. Uh, did we put this further to the right than we did for this one? I think so. Most of this is probably going to be fine. Like, I think it's better to copy and then edit for this one. Heavy oil needs to connect with this part though. That's going to be water. I don't know how we're going to get water down there. It doesn't have to be high throughput. We've got the storage here because uh, sulfuric acid is very bursty uh, with its consumption of water and stuff. So this is going to be iron. This will have to be sulfur. And this part's negotiable. But tentatively, we'll use the same layout. I don't see a way... I do see a way that we're going to get heavy oil over here. Okay, let's assume for now that we're going to remove this. And... Probably... Well, we can't put that that close because the pipes will conflict. This part is water. That connects over there, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'll have to move this over here. And... Turn off logistics for now. Where is this going? Oh, right. We added that. Okay. I'd kind of like to make this symmetrical if I can. Well, it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical no matter what. I don't hate the look of that, though. Except then there's no room for this sulfur pipe. Uh, sulfur belt, rather. This was coal, so we don't need that. This is supposed to be water. Um, we don't really have a spot on this side to do the water piping. I think we can get away with it over here, though. It might not look particularly good. Let's just say, tentatively, we do something like this. That'll work. Can we do better? If this comes over here, we need to move this combinator. If we need to move this combinator, it doesn't receive power. Unless we move it over here, which is probably not going to work anyway, because this would have to go over here. Uh, unless... We rotate like so. That is the one configuration that still doesn't help at all, actually. Um, we could always put the power switches somewhere else, but they already fit really nice and snug over here. So I don't think we're going to change this part. We're going to bring the water in from somewhere else. Can, can you stop? Please, please just, please just rotate. No. Yes. Okay. There we go. No. There we go. Okay, cool. I do like the look of that a little bit better, I think. Okay. So water is not coming this way. Maybe this one should be crude oil, and this could be water. Traditionally, I've always put crude over here, 
I feel like it looks a bit better if the black coal and the crude oil are over on the same side as well. Not that it necessarily makes any sense. That just barely fits. I like that a lot. Well, it doesn't barely fit. It is just barely the maximum distance. Mm, I can live with this one. Unless this one lines up perfectly. Nope. I could move this part over slightly, but kind of wrecks the symmetry over here. If I put this over here... I guess? I feel like that's going to look better. That barely fit... <laughs> that barely fits, I like that a lot, is what she said. Thank you, Veldek. Okay. Alright, so... I think I like that look a little bit better. So water goes in there. Bonk. Bonk indeed. Um... If we do coal down here... It's probably going to work out just fine. The only thing we need coal for is plastic and explosives, right? And... Okay, yeah. I probably will end up copying this or do something very similar. Don't know that we're necessarily going to do much better than that. Um... There's efficiency modules here, probably because I was adjusting the ratio, and this is actually slightly more than a blue belt, yep. So maybe we could reduce the number of chemical plants making sulfur instead. Might be a good idea. I think now would be a good time to go back get some more stuff. I'm... If I go back and have most of these pipes and things taken, I'm going to regret my decision. So why don't we drop these off? Um, this will do, actually. We'll get rid of all the pipes that are in my trash slots. Alright, back to base. And I guess I'll just pop the pipes in here. Make sure we get everything else. To do patch five omni smelters re steel. I think I did that. Yeah, I think I did that off stream. I may even end up replacing all these Omni Smelters off stream if I end up particularly liking uh, the replacement design. It's going to have... Oh, wait, actually, that's going to be a massive, massive pain. Because we're going to have to move all of these stations. I forgot that I managed to move the rail up a little bit. I think it is connecting to here and then coming down here. Oops. Kind of hard to demonstrate. Um, and there's just enough room to get all of the cargo wagons to be completely exposed to the stack inserters. Okay, so I want to know 
if we do speed modules, uh, how many chemical plants is it going to take to saturate a blue belt with sulfur? Because I think with the space that we're going... Oh my goodness. Uh, the answer is five. Four is not quite enough, sadly. Uh, what if we do five with a little bit of efficiency module? Eight point... Oh. Forty-four point six four. Okay, what if we go for an even number? And slightly more efficiency modules. Six does forty-seven. I think I'm happy with that. I'm almost... No, I'm completely certain this is going to be less than forty-five... Yeah. Okay. Yep, feel good. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we only need six of these um, to completely saturate. Uh, let's move this up a bit. I think that's going to look a little bit neater. It's not like it's going to touch these up here. Uh, we only need six of these to saturate a blue belt. What? What? Huh? Twenty... Oh, was I... Was I checking two of them and multiplying by five? Or six? Okay. Alright, let's go for f full speed ahead. Fewer machines, less UPS. Uh, more space available. Okay, so this is still only 38. We're going to need more machines than I thought, but we're still easily going to have some room left over on the side to play with other things. I could be wrong. Oh, this isn't powered yet. There we go. Alright, so this is 12. That's 58. That's too many. This is 48. Okay. 36. Um, I'm... 99% sure if I put in even one efficiency module for all of these, it's going to drop below 45. That was a speed module 2, not a speed module 3. Okay, let's double check all of these. Forty-four point three nine two. You know what? I think I can live with that. So let's get rid of this one. And who knows if we'll use those water pipes. Um, this part is going to have to be in the middle. We've got ten. This is fine. There we go. Which looks more like the middle? Probably this one. Fourth beacon from the left has a speed 2. Oh, it does too. Wait, does this mean... Could it be? I think it's going to be just barely under 45. 44.64, yeah. I can live with that though. Um, okay, so here we have sulfuric acid. We are going to need some sulfur. I think copying the output stations might be totally fine, except that 
uh, one minor detail. Uh, Samsa, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so this is going to go here. Uh, we're going to have more than enough room for a proper loading station for explosives, actually. And... Over here... We need some signals. We need to change these signals. Um, we do want trains to be able to go this way. I think I just have to add one like this. And... No, we don't want them going that way, actually. We want this one. That should be fine. On this side, we do it like this. And we do want... We don't want the trains going this way. We do want them going this way. And we do want them going that way. That should be it. Oh, it's getting pretty close to time to finish up for today. Um, I want to copy-paste this stuff before we go, though. That'll be a good basis from which to begin, I think. Yeah, so we've got way more than enough space for a proper pickup station here this time. And unfortunately, we can't really move this stuff down, like, uh, just a few tiles. Um, it just, there's kind of a really awkward middle ground here where it's hard to have, uh, like, a good rail. Obviously, that pipe is annoying. It's hard to have, like, a good... Can I not touch this? Okay. Nope. Nope. Actually, maybe I could do it like this. The locomotive would be at an angle, but everything else should work. Finish? Finish. Yeah. It is just about time to finish the stream for today. Uh, same time tomorrow, it's going to be another long one, but it's going to be variety day. Um, definitely going to be some, spending some time on satisfactory. Uh, probably, no, pretty much definitely going to run the experimental build and check out the new update. When space elevators come out, one thing to consider is that they'll be in the same position on the planet slash moon and orbit. So you might want to reserve some space, uh, some place that works on both. Interesting. That is very interesting. And that, yeah, that makes sense. And it's not like, it doesn't just make it super easy. Thanks for the stream. No worries. Let's see who is streaming Factorio today. Of course it's Mucky. Dune is also streaming. Uh, we've raided both of them at least a couple of times recently. Why don't we check out someone else today? <coughs> <clears throat> Thanks for the stream. No worries. And thank you very much for the uh, gifted subs again. Baker's Dodge. Much appreciated. Okay. Uh, who all is streaming today? I think we've dropped in on Solar PH before. 
That's probably a safe bet. Yeah, why don't we uh, give some love to a smaller streamer today? Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Uh, check out the blueprints or the Discord if you're interested. If you have any questions or requests or anything's broken in the blueprints, by all means, let me know. Uh, let's drop by to Solo. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.